so good evening everyone uh, my name dr arun shekhar assistant professor department of ece gmrit coordinator for this webinar i feel privileged to welcome you all for this today's webinar on tips to formulate research project proposals and write technical papers organized by the department of ece gmr institute of technology rajam on 21st and 22nd june 2020 for this today's inaugural chief guest sir respected principal sir for this today's inaugural chief guest sir respected principal sir gmrit dr cl vrsv prasad sir and hd tribuling dr varni sir next it's my great pleasure to welcome our resource person dr anandana yes sir researcher and scientist acm distinguished speaker daitang university daitang right now for today's session to address the participants with his valuable words welcome you sir i welcome our beloved head of the head of the department ece dr mb nageshwar sir welcome you sir i welcome all the hod faculty members for this two days webinar totally 1000 plus participants register for this webinar various registration from all over the country to all the length and the breadth of the country have joined in this webinar i request our respected principal dr cl vrsv prasad sir to say some few words sir yeah dr arun yes sir uh thank you very much Hello. Thank you very much for uh, giving this Sir. giving me the opportunity. Uh, uh, at the outset, I would like to thank once again uh, Dr. Nayar, Anand Nayar, for accepting our request and then being a, a resource person for uh, the program where uh, the two topics which are more uh, needed for any teacher, that is, for formulating the research proposals and even writing for the quality research papers. because uh, nowadays uh, 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 in any academics people believe that research and academy has to go hand in hand so there is nothing like uh, uh, research going uh, parallel to the academics or academic going parallel to the uh, research so both has to go in hand in hand and and i'm sure that uh, this point is realized by all the people who are there in the teaching community and uh, uh, this is not late than ever because writing a proposal or writing a paper is again it appears to be like an art so in that context uh, if you hear from the people like uh, dr anand uh, who is almost like a veteran in the research i should say where uh, he'll be able to guide all the young upcoming uh, faculty members who are there who got into teaching with more passion towards teaching and uh, if they listen to them and probably they, they'll be knowing Uh, a, a systematic a scientific way of uh, uh, building an approach for uh, uh, bringing out a, a quality research proposal or a quality research paper and in the indian context uh, dr anand sir for your information in the indian context uh, the the conversion of the proposal is hardly 10 to 15% whether yes. whether it is whether it is a, whether it is a dst or whatever the research funding that we have here in the, in the indian context and the research proposals maximum at the most it may go up to 15 to 20% nothing beyond so that is that is one indicator very clearly talking about the quality of the research papers in the i mean uh, quality of the research proposals in the indian context is a big challenge mm -hmm. people think that writing is something like collecting the information from different baskets and then putting and sending it as a proposal and it is not that easy as well so mm -hmm. so i am sure that uh, uh, you will be throwing more light on that and make people understand really the need and the, the systematic approach that is needed to build up the project proposal and in the same way uh, having done some research work putting on the paper in proper way collating properly and so that to make it into a publishable article so making it a publishable article is also an again a technique and an art of an individual so though there are cases where the uh, the content research content is good enough but they are unable to publish 
Okay. So that again, there, there needs a lot of uh, uh, skill and uh, uh, ability to put them in proper way, in a proper structured way, so that it is acceptable by the premier and the, the popular uh, 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 international journals and magazines. So in that context, I think your words will make all our faculty members enlightened about uh, uh, and what is that needed and also they will do the introspection what exactly they are doing and in fact uh, uh, your insights will let them uh, or, or open up a different uh, gateway for them to think beyond what they are thinking uh, uh, to build the uh, research proposals and to write the uh, research papers. So uh, sure. I wish all the participants in this context and I think that you'll have a very good time for the next two days. And I'm sure that uh, this will initiate a very good thought process in the mindsets of all the researchers and all the faculty members. And then I wish you all the good luck. Thank you very much, sir. Dr. Anand, again, once again, for accepting yes, your... Thank you, sir. 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 Thank Dr. Anandanayar, an academician, researcher, author, writer, inventor, innovator, scientist, consultant, and orator, received his MCA from Punjabi University, Patiala, in 2008, with a gold medal and distinction. MPhil in computer science in 2009, with first class from Tamil Nadu University. Then MTech in information technology in the year 2011, with first class and distinction, and an university topper. And MBA from information systems, with first class from City Manipal University. Manipal. He did his PhD in the field of computer science from S. Bhagat University, Gobigant, in 2017, wireless sensor networks and network stimulation, and the top in the course of two. A certified professional with some papers, international and globally recognized professional certification from various IADNs. Now I am handing over this session to Dr. Anandanaya, sir, to address the participants with his valuable words. Thank you, sir. So thank you so much, Dr. Arun, and thank you so much, Principal Sir, for inviting me to GMRIT Andhra Pradesh Institute. And right, welcome. Yeah, welcome, sir. Yeah. And I totally agree with the words of Principal Sir that writing the proposal and even writing the research paper it's a cumbersome process for the budding researchers, and that's why I'm here in order to guide them and to meet the requirements that what is to be done in order to make the grant proposal successfully done in the eyes of DST, CSIR, CSIR, as well as we will be doing a strong discussion that how we can have a strong research paper that can be accepted in high impact factor journals. So I welcome all the participants and all the listeners and even Dr. Arun that, uh, that today I'm going to discuss one of the most important hidden agendas. Sir, the voice is becoming eco. Please, please, please close this mic, please. Thank you so much. So uh, in the next uh, two days from today and tomorrow, I will be discussing lots of things with regard to granting, with regards to PhD, how to choose the topic, literature review, what mistakes we should avoid and how we can go for the research paper writing. Okay. So before I start with the agenda for day one, that is today, that is uh, June 21. So I will be opening up, first of all, my introduction as well as the agenda. And I'm going to ask you some series of questions that can make you mentally prepare to attend this workshop. So first of all, let me introduce myself. So here is one of the uh, pictures that you can see of my glimpses of my career. So here you can see I'm acting as a speaker at Dev Day Tank. This is one of the best events for technology. And last to last year, I got the best speaker award there. This is my conference, which happened in Hanoi this year. That is ICIIT 2020. And it has been indexed with ACM Digital Library. And even it is Scopus indexed. And now next year, we are organizing this conference again in Ho Chi Minh City, Vietnam. And again, it will be indexed in ACM Digital Library, Scopus indexed. And again, we are collaborating with more than 10 SCI journals for the extension of the research papers. So you are most welcome to join the conference in Vietnam. And you are most welcome to submit your quality research papers. So here is my photo, which you can see. Uh, I'm only holding an owl, which I already, you know, some of the people know have already uh, attended to my webinars. This is one of the invention that I did. And this is an owl, which is actually based on IoT. And uh, this owl is having smart sensors with regard to temperature, humidity, and even it can sense the people in the room and can even control your smart home also. And it's a, one of the best, cheapest gadgets in IoT as well as smart technology. 
So here is my photo over here, which is uh, the award which I was holding. So this award has been given to me by my university for outstanding research. And here is one of my photo, which you can see right now. And I'm acting as Google I.O. speaker in Vietnam. So the, one of the winnings of my life, you can see right now, here I'm standing with one of the CEOs of the FPT software. That is uh, Mr. Hung Tran, one of the best uh, technologists in the world. Here is my uh, winning uh, photo, which you can see on uh, GDG DevFest, which my students have made the project last year. And we won the fest with our uh, with the distinction score. And more than 30, 40 teams were present in that. And this is again in the FinTech event. I'm also a FinTech speaker. And this is the best speaker award, which I got in 2019. And here is one of my aircraft, which I'm, uh, uh, which I'm holding right now. And uh, because I'm also a certified drone pilot. So this is one of my invention that I did. So let me introduce myself, everybody. I'm working as professor, researcher, and scientist in graduate school, Jutan University, Da Nang, Vietnam. I'm a PhD in computer science in the area for sensor communication, swarm intelligence, network simulation, 16 plus years of teaching, research, and consultancy experience with various IT giants and other corporate houses in India, Vietnam, and Korea as res under research projects. I'm specialized in WSN, managed swarm intelligence, machine learning, deep learning, cloud computing, big data, IoT, cybersecurity, intelligent computing, brain computing, network simulation, blockchain, artificial intelligence, and many more. I have published more than 425 research papers, out of which 57 to 60 papers are in the SCA index journal. And maybe by the end of this year, I'm planning to get my 100 SCA. I'm again repeating 100 SCA research papers to be accepted by the end of this year. I'm having 50 plus articles in open source, 25 books, and 75 plus certifications from various IT organizations, including Cisco, Microsoft, Google, Oracle, GAQM, Bing Cert, uh, Six Sigma, uh, you can say Cyber Roam, many other companies. 1400 plus citations on Google Scholar with H index of 20 and I index of 48, and soon it will be touching 25 and 50 respectively by the end of next month. I'm a member of 90 plus research organizations as senior associate and life member, and I'm acting as senior member for IEEE and ACM, including ACM Distinguished Speaker, the first and the only one right now in Vietnam. I'm having my own uh, journal that is IJ Global Journal of uh, Smart Vehicles and Smart Transportation, and next year this journal will be becoming Scoopus Indexed. And I'm associated with more than 500 conferences as national and international reviewer, even the proceeding chair, review committee member, advisory committee member, and many more. I've delivered more than 200 talks in eight countries, 50 plus keynote talks and 100 plus faculty development programs. And today I'm very lucky that this is my 100th faculty development program that has going to be completed today only. So I'm certified uh, drone pilot with two inventions, three patents and 15 copyrights. And considering my research and teaching, you can see that most of my awards are awarded for research and even for my teaching also, including Distinguished Scientist Award, Young Scientist Award, Young Achiever and many others. Now, let me start with the motto and principles that we should obey in our life. And that are my mottos. And that is what I believe that I started from these mottos in my life. And if anybody of you want to spend their life in a quality manner. So I want that everybody should listen properly because it is very important for us that we should have a goal. But it is very important for us also that we should have discipline in our life. So the first motto of my life is knowledge for a better world. We are academicians and I always say my students also that even don't consider me as a teacher or a professor, consider me as a student because in technology, what I used to study about 10 years back in my masters, in my in, uh, in my mtech that is not available today that is all changed because we already know that when we used to study about 10 years back we used to study c plus plus and java and net but today the things are totally changed with python data science and other languages so we have to keep our knowledge improving we have to learn latest technologies every day we have to keep ourselves updated and abreast with latest technologies so always say that i am putting the knowledge and i am always a learner so the second motto that I believe as a scientist, if you are stuck in some problem and no one is supporting you because you know this is a common problem. So first of all, relax because God wants you to learn many things. So if you want to learn many things, try to handle the situation at your own, because if you handle the situation at your own, you will be able to fight the problems and you are able to learn many, many things. And as a computer engineer, come scientist, come professor, I believe in this thing. Don't be, uh, be afraid of challenges and hardships. 
because as a researcher we are always fighting with the latest problems we have to find some solutions we have to come up come up with and cope up with the latest technologies so in order to fight with the latest problems we have to be ready and we should not be afraid for anything to come believe me everybody this computer science field require has lots of challenges till now that is to be solved and research papers are just one of the one of the most important things so don't consider that re publishing research paper is the only uh, is the one and only technique for you so there are other projects also we have to apply for other things we have to be consultant so there are hundreds of hardships and challenges every day we should not be afraid so keep the uh, keep the goal going and keep the technology flowing on so in order to collaborate with me because i will be also telling you how to collaborate with people i will be also showing you what ethics and what other personality traits that you have to follow in order to collaborate with good academicians so right now i'm having opportunities in front of you so if your institute has good uh, mtech people or uh, mca people so and they're interested to join for phd i'm having three phd seats under me with a specialization of cloud computing wireless sensor networks machine learning deep learning some intelligence and everything so the eligibility is that the person should be first class masters with five minimum five scopus papers or at least two sci journals with either quarter two or quarter three but quarter one is preference but if it is quarter two or quarter three that is okay and the person he or she should have strong skill set in programming simulator python and machine learning libraries and plus a good chance to teach with me and willing to research with passion and some of the people if you are interested for your postdoc program even i am having seat with me so i am having two seats right now which are available with me so if you are interested to apply for postdoc so how you have to apply what traits you have to follow what procedure it is i am going to show you in just a moment so the seats available are two and i'm having specialization for cloud security deep learning in wireless communications 5g sensor communications and other specialization that can be taken care of the eligibility is minimum phd it should be in computer science or csc or it with minimum 10 sci papers quarter 1 and quarter 2 only and a strong skill set is required in programming and python machine learning and deep learning libraries and willing to research in 24 into 7 environment and strong teaching and research proposal i will be showing you how to put your good proposal when you are going to collaborate with the, some of the best people in the world so here is the advertisement which you can see of my university and if you are interested you can send my your resume to my my email i am going to give you my email my whatsapp number in the later half when we will go for a break of 10 minutes after one hour so if you are looking for other collaborations so you can have special issue with me in scopus and sa journals right now i'm having nine slots available with me because three four slots are already done so i'm coming up with more special issues also which are all indexed in free sa journals i am having looking for good collaborators with me for edited books research paper collaborations and even for projects that will be starting by july or maybe august 2020 onwards so the period will be 2 to 3 years next years so in order to apply i will be showing you the text but right now what i require is that that you require a brief by data for minimum 500 words special achievements highest qualification detailed resume where with more focus on your research as well as conferences based publications and you require a teaching and research statement i will be showing you in this uh, fdp that how to make your teaching and research statement also very important for you to understand and after that list please 10 publications only regular issues so only i require those people in my team that at least they are publishing only in regular issues rather than special issues i will be showing you what is the advantage for regular issue what is some of the disadvantages of uh, uh, special issues also and at least i am looking for minimum h index of 10 and minimum i index of 15 so minimum the person should be well trained and research should be in blood and passion to work and will to work for 24 hours a day this is my basic requirement so why to attend this fdp program now i'm going to answer you some of the questions let us start the fdp now so there are, there are some of the questions and if you answer most of the questions as yes let me tell you ladies and gentlemen that you are at the right place so see this everybody are you frustrated depressed and feeling low of getting rejections in top journals you are not getting good job promotions you are stuck in your job for more than 5 to 10 years even after your phd as assistant professor you want to get promoted to associate and professor you have a dream to work for a big university among the top tier university of top 500 rank you have a dream yes or no so that's if you have yes then it is a place to be with me so you want to learn how to do the research you are a phd student and you are searching for a topic and want to publish a paper and the most important thing is nobody is guiding you you want to have some international exposure 
You want to publish in top tier journals with high impact factor of minimum 10, 7, 6, or maybe 18, 22. So these top tier journals I'm saying, you are not aware of research tools. You have a dream of a transaction paper or nature paper with more than five impact factor. And other questions that I want to have, you want to publish chapters with good publishers with high quality that those chapters are getting recognitions. So one thing is writing a chapter and writing a paper. But the other thing is after writing the chapter, after writing the paper, you are getting good recognitions, you are getting popularity, you are getting good reads on ResearchGate, you are getting collaboration mails. Uh, so this is another criteria. So need to get good opportunity in research and want to be associated with prestigious labs and professors. You want to get funded projects of grants of minimum one lakh dollar. That is the minimum I'm saying and have a dream to go for postdoc or work as associate professor abroad. So if most of your answers and I believe that most of your answers will be yes, then I'm welcoming you to this workshop and I'm saying it openly. So please put your questions on the YouTube uh, comment section. I will be posting each and every answer in the break and don't worry for your questions. I will be giving you my email ID, my WhatsApp number. You can immediately call me after that. So don't worry. I'm always there with you and I'm a highly supportive person. So don't worry for anything. So the agenda for today will be, first of all, I will be opening up what is the tips for interview, what is to be the cover letter, the teaching and research statement, and how to become an impressive personality. We have to learn that how we should email to the professor, because let me tell you, I'm saying openly every day, I'm getting more than 50 to 70 emails just for collaboration that, sir, we want to have some paper with you. I want to have some special issue with you. But believe me, I only reply two or three emails because I first of all see the content of the email, the presentation of email, and that's what I'm able to take the decision that whether I'm interested to email to reply or whether I'm not interested to reply. OK, so my percentage of acceptance for collaboration is only one to three percent, just one to three. So what is research and how to do it? Then we will discuss research and methodology. So don't combine research methodology. Research is different thing. Methodology is different thing. Then we will have some hidden information for PhD scholars that how to handle the guide. First of all, it is very important to handle the guide and to start preparing for PhD. How we should effectively develop an effective research proposal. Now, I have already told you that if you want to do postdoc, if you want to collaborate with a foreign professor for some special issue for some book, it is most important for you that your proposal should be strong. Because I've already told you that if your proposal is not strong, that professor and that person is not going to reply you. Your email will just be ticked and it will be deleted. That's all. Finish. So how to write an email for collaboration and how to put email signature, very important. And how to read a research paper. This is important, everybody. Because 90% people say that, sir, we are reading a research paper, but no, none of the paper is read in a proper tact. So there is a tactics to, re to read a paper I will be showing you. And after that, I will be giving you some tools of publishing and then we will discuss how to write a paper. So this will be the nine agendas for today. So sit back, relax, enjoy and uh, note the tips one by one. So tomorrow that will be uh, covering tomorrow. That will be more discussions on how to write the paper. Secret discussion, never to get any paper rejected. Final thinking and experience as a researcher and what mistakes we can avoid in research papers. Now let's talk of first of all the research. Now, let me tell you, everybody, I have seen many people that can get the paper and they're adding their names in the research paper and they're getting the papers done. No, it's not the way. So it is very important for you to understand that every person in the research paper not only should be a collaborator, he or she should be a uh, somewhat presenter as well as contributor also, because it is very easy for go for collaboration, but it is very difficult to be a contributor. So let me tell you, these are the most important five classes of people, but I'm not considering the sixth class. OK, so the first class, these are called the high nas. So they ask many researchers to appear on their papers. So the second category is Borgius. These famous people lend their names. So there are famous people, many. They lend their names to be appear on papers for profited in researchers that, OK, sir, you add you can add my name. OK, you can clear the papers. And that's why you can see that there are some people in the world who are getting back to back papers. But uh, let me tell you, they are not less than a ghost author. So swappers, they are just putting their names that, OK, I put your name, you put my name, like all these people. These are called swappers. So porters, they keep writing hundreds of papers and they don't think that whether my one of the paper is having a good impact or not. Publishing 100 papers is not a big deal. 
publishing 500 papers is not a big deal but publishing one paper that is creating a good good impact on the whole world that makes sense so ask yourself that if you if in a in a whole year you are publishing five sca journals are you publishing one sca journal that is able to solve a real time problem so if you are able to solve that paper that is your one paper that is your achievement for one year that's our yes this is my paper and i have solved this problem by taking these instances and how to take that i am going to show you so next paper are next people are called sweepers they wake up after 5 years on a topic and start writing many papers and act like that they are first in the top so even i can see that today even i am getting lots of papers when i do the review papers for conferences some scoopers journals that even i am getting some papers on uh, sinkhole attack on mobile ad hoc network sometimes pe people are uh, giving a review paper on ant clone optimization so these papers are nothing less than a rejected papers because uh, sometimes <clears throat> when i get a paper uh, the title is one of the main reason that i am able to make up my mind that whether i am going to accept the paper or whether i am going to reject the paper so if your title is not enthusiastic it is not looking novel there is a 60% chance get it ready that okay i'm going to throw your paper out out i'm saying so what are the leaders these are the leaders they create new ideas and write papers and lead the research world so these are the terms everybody these are the only terms in the research world now ask yourself now this is a question to all of you which person you are belonging to the question is hard the 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 truth is always very very sore but we have to answer this question so you can answer this question that today most of the people are becoming sweepers and even you can say porters they are even having uh, they are even having sweepers like all these type of people i am meeting up these days so the seven pillars let me tell you everybody there are the seven pillars and this is my experience that i am going to tell you these are the seven pillars to be an effective researcher number 1 have creative thinking and think towards the future because today we are writing a paper which means it is going to be published in the future it is going to be solving a problem so even think of apple think of microsoft today they are working on the technology today even they are working on a future imac and macbooks today in 2020 that will be launched in 2022 so they have to think of the future what will be the future people will hold their brands in their hands so have a creative thinking and think of the future and have a sky high thinking so just say just say everybody nothing's impossible nothing is impossible everybody second thing be aware so there is two important words be aware and be informed so you are aware but you are not informed you are informed but you are not aware so be aware everything everybody so be aware and informed of everything in your field everything of your field you should respect and love because if you are computer science people you should not think that okay i am a networking person i cannot think of image processing i should not think of machine learning i am trait of this and this now there was a time that was a time 3 years back but now things have changed if you are writing a good uh, if you are writing a good paper today at least you have to merge three to four uh, fields in one and then you are able to get a good scientific paper so if you are working on only one cloud computing let me tell you you have to merge big data and if you are merging big data it means that you have to merge machine learning which means you have to merge some optimization algorithm so these fields are now going as a fusion fields so don't think that only one field will fetch you a good paper or one field will make you a good researcher no now the time has changed it is called fusion of everything now the third thing this is very important everybody have strong networking very strong what i believe in my experience that if your network is very good if your network is very very impactful you are getting good papers you are getting good exposures and always be in touch with everybody number 4 keep an eye on problems keep a close eye that if a one paper has been published okay what is the future scope what is the drawbacks in the current paper what is the parameter that is left behind by the current researcher that what i can be doing in the near future so keep an eye on problems and be the first one to take the charge so research is a rat race everybody if you are the first person to publish the paper you are going to get the high citations so the next thing have strong hold on english and communication skills this is very important everybody because sometimes when i get the paper to evaluate let me tell you 70% papers are rejected because of the bad english and bad grammar one line is there and the second line is not actuatingly going for a good readability flow i will be showing you all these tips and tricks so please have a good hold on english and communication skills and have a high ethics on email presentation and leadership skills 
So you have to prove yourself that, yes, I can take up this project. I have the knack to write the email. I have the knack that I can convince a person that he or she can be collaborated. So this all things we have to work. It's not an easy game. It's not a one day game. It is like a prayer that is going to be fruitful for at least three to four years after. So keep learning, everybody learning and learning, keep learning. Even today I'm learning, I'm doing courses online and even I'm attending webinars. So always think yourself as a student of your field. If you say that, okay, I'm the master, I'm a professor, the same day you are gone, you are finished, which means that you are giving the message that, okay, know everything. No, you don't know anything. So the most important thing is most important. This is my experience. Never retire. Teachers retire. Army men retire. Even the government people retire who works in banks or other government associations. But researchers and scientists, they never retire. Because he's a researcher. He's a scientist. He always loves to have the problems and he will never retire. If he's a true researcher and scientist, even if he's on the deathbed, even he's paralyzed, he's going to give some knowledge and he's thinking something that how can be, uh, how the things can become possible, how we can solve the problems. So now this is just a basic motivation se session in order to make you make yourself aware as well as to make yourself ready for this workshop. So it doesn't matter where you start. And the main thing is you should begin. So don't think that if you are writing a paper and you are uh, uh, no doubt that you are writing a paper, you are writing the paper for the first time, you are you are thinking very much, uh, you can say that you are fear that, okay, my paper will get rejected. Okay, your paper get, get, can get rejected. It's, it's a part and parcel of your life. Even my papers also get rejected. It doesn't mean that I'm getting depression. No, the main thing is that uh, I want to make my paper more solid, more better. So don't think of rejections. Don't think of anything. Just keep the way going on. So let's begin and let the journey begins. So now, ladies and gentlemen, this is very important, the presentation for all of you. That is how to get the interview, how to prepare the cover letters, teaching and research statements, because let me tell you right now, because I will go to research papers in the later half of this presentation today. Because if you are looking for a good postdoc opportunity, you're good looking for a good PhD opportunity abroad. And even if you're applying for assistant, associate or professor level abroad, the most important thing, the three important things that we require, the most important. Uh, let me tell you, no matter where you have done your PhD, it doesn't matter. The most important the thing matters is what kind of publication you have. The first thing very important for you to understand. The first stress is your SCI publication. And after that, the stress is your Scoopus publications. So most of the universities, they see that, okay, how many impact factor journal, what transaction journal you have, what type of impact factor journals you are putting up. The second thing, what is your teaching statement? How good you are into teaching, how, how, uh, how reflexful you are into teaching, how impactful you are in teaching, and what are your grades, and how you are going for the teaching methodology, and what is your vision for teaching. And the third important thing is your research statement. What is your current research? What problems you are solving right now? And what is your vision that if you get a job there and what is your vision in the next two, three years that, yes, I want to solve this problem. I, I am interested to go and solve this issue in the real time in this area and I will be successful. So these three main important pillars are there in order to get a job, to get a collaboration and to get huge recognition that you are a best person away from the crowd. Because let me tell you everybody, there are many people who write the papers. Almost everybody writes a paper, but only few of the few, they make it to the best journals. Few of the few. So the answer is in front of you that you want to be few of the few or you should be in the crowd. So you have to decide. The answer is you have to keep working. And it is not a very easy profession. It is a hard earned profession. It is a creative profession and it requires both your mental skills and your patient skills. And that is what we have to learn in this FDP. So the most of the important thing that everybody asked me that what kind of positions that we have to apply. The first thing is postdoc. The postdoc means what is postdoc? Postdoc means that you have already done your PhD and after your PhD, you are interested for more research. You are having some more ideas that, okay, you can take this problem. You can take a big problem in your life. You can be associated with a good professor, with a good lab, and you need some more opportunities in terms of facilities, in terms of infrastructure. And if you are given that facilities, you are going to give a solution to a bigger problem. That is called a postdoc. 
postdoc actually means working in a lab with a professor with having a uh, lots of grants and lots of government based projects and you are associating with him for 2 3 years or maybe for the whole lifetime and you are solving the problems with him so postdoc means solving the real time problem which are only associated with grant based projects second thing is you want to become a part time or a adjunct or a seasonal professor so that depends on you the third thing is called the tenure track that you are applying for a university for at least for a regular position with a contract basically like two or three years and after that you want to continue like anything and you want to pay for your duties and you want to be prepared for that and last but not the least even for that position we can even say that you are an entrepreneur you are having a research company and you want to solve the problems you want to start your own startup like i have already told in some of the webinars that india can become ai super hub in terms of healthcare so you can become an entrepreneur that i am giving some solutions to the healthcare with regard to artificial intelligence or machine learning so be your own boss so where can i find the job postings and opportunities this is most important for you to learn the first uh, website that some of the people don't know but please note it down this is called academicpositions.com so if you are looking for a good opportunity uh, apart from india you want to go abroad you want to collaborate with some labs they even have the positions that how can you be collaborated as a part time researcher as a full time researcher as a adjunct faculty so you can have this website called academicpositions.com second is known as conferences most important if you are going to conferences regularly i am not talking of a ordinary conferences because i believe that uh, i believe and i'm saying it openly in india now basic institutions are even organizing lots of sopringer and i triple e conferences these are just basic conferences just to make your papers get published i am talking of a star conferences the best tier conferences like i triple e conferences acm conferences elsevier conferences so you must go there which are apart from that you must go outside of india at least one or two uh, two, uh, two times at least a year in order to improve and enhance your networking because if you go to these conferences you will be able to listen to the industry people you are able to listening lots of professors who are coming from various fields and might be you can get a good person that is interested to find your research so the third thing research gate network very important everybody and please post your every paper when it is published on research gate and research gate network what i am today research gate network has placed almost 45% role in it to improve my career also uh, what i am today is 45% because of research gate this is a hidden secret that i am going to give you today the next thing if you are a acm member and if you, even if you are not a acm member please keep a close eye on acm communication magazine because this magazine is going to give you the latest research latest opportunities and even the job opportunities also have strong links with networks everybody please make strong links on linkedin on research gate follow the researchers if you have a good linkedin network you have a good collaborative person only when you are writing good research papers you have a good links and maybe that person can offer you a good job the strong most important point is if you are having good publication people will come to you let me tell you ladies and gentlemen even i have written sometimes i even write emails to some of the phd scholars that i have come across your paper and i find your paper interesting so even i am working on this area are you interested to collaborate and even let me tell you they are giving very good responses and even i am calling some two p two three phd people next year to my university because of this covid i am not calling the, because uh, the things are slow down but even i am calling them next year to visit and uh, have collaborations so don't think that even it's a phd person or a mtech scholar or a or a post doc person just keep a look on a recognition with strong publication so active member on social media very important research gate linkedin everything should be very important and most important i am saying it openly the linkedin network because if you're on linkedin you already know which person is publishing which papers and you are going for a good recognition like everything you are getting connections so in short in order to have a job search the first important thing is talk to your network activate your connections contact referees most important and have a good reference please collect documents early like teaching statement research statement good resume good publication record with with essay publication scopus and chapters and even even with magazines also so subscribe and search to lots of databases websites classifies everything attend meetings and conferences and the most important thing is your network mature and nature mature and nature your conference your your uh, connections and relationships with everybody believe me everybody don't think that he is a phd student or he is a postdoc scholar or he is an assistant professor in the research field everybody is important because everybody can help you and if you have strong connections because no doubt that person cannot help you but his sub connection can help you 
So have connectivity with everybody with the open collaboration. Even I'm having on my LinkedIn some collaboration with management people, some physics people. Even sometimes I take the help of mathematicians also because I read some of the mathematics paper. Even I, I get I, I sent the paper to some mathematician professors. They give me good feedback that okay, can you improve this formula? Can you delete this? And because of them, I get good publications like that. So connections are everything. So what is often requested, everybody? The first thing is your CV. Most important, most important is your CV. So today I'm not giving any lecture on CV, but uh, maybe I will be in touch with Dr. Arun that we can have some good lecture on how to make a CV and how to have detailed cover letter, but I'm going to show you some glimpses of that. So we have the letter of recommendations, cover letter. I'm going to show you what should be the cover letter, name of references, then writing sample, and we should have a good transcript of our achievements. Let me tell you, you should always start your resume with a transcript that what exactly you are, what is your achievements and what exactly you have done. Because sometimes people don't read your resume, but with a brief transcript or a biography of four pages or two pages, you can get a good recognition. The teaching information, which is important, you should have your philosophy, how you teach, what is your methodology of teaching, evidence of effectiveness, syllabus, student rating, as well as your portfolio. You should always write that what subject specialization you have and uh, what you are doing, what contribution you're doing in terms of curriculum development, syllabus development, books writing, whatever you and what is your methodology and how is your teaching and uh, mentorship with the students. Very important. So research information, most important copies of your latest publications, at least five to seven. It should be latest and every paper should always be written that, OK, this is the paper. And in the brief thing, you should write in three lines that, OK, we are solving this problem via this paper. Very important. So you should have your research interest, your research plan. And even if you are not mentioning your your goals and philosophy in your cover idea, it is a very bad idea. So always mention, I'm going to show you the cover letter. So what is your cover letter? First of all, we should have one to two pages maximum, and it should be a writing sample. The four components should be the opening paragraph. I'm going to show you opening paragraph, the teaching statement, what exactly you're a teacher, the research statement, and the closing paragraph. So let me tell you if a job comes, let me tell you everybody, even uh, even sometimes I get uh, like uh, resumes that, OK, sir, can you evaluate this resume? Sir, can you evaluate this cover letter? Believe me, with the cover letter only, we decide that whether we want to call this person for the interview or we have to reject this person. The cover letter should be very strong. And this is very important when you even submit the research paper also. And most important thing is you should also mention your teaching and uh, professional experiences, whatever it is. So the cover letter, let me tell you, the first thing should be what position you are applying. Assistant professor, associate professor, professor, or a postdoc scholar, or you are going for a good collaboration like everything. Sometimes I get an email, respected sir, I am this person from this institute, I'm looking for collaboration. And what and you know what I do for this mail, I just click on this mail and I delete it. Because this person doesn't know the manners to write an email. He doesn't know what is going to be the collaboration, what he is, and even he has not mentioned his latest research, how he knows me. And the most important thing is on what areas he want to do the research. You are asking me that, sir, we want to collaborate on what parameters, how you want to do collaboration. So please mention an email. I'm going to show you one email also, sample email also. State how you have learned about the opening. Very important. Motivation, why you are motivated to apply this job or any position. And after thing, after that thing, mention your CV, brief CV for that. Then you should always write your description of teaching in terms of that how beautiful you are teacher, what methodology and what exceptional qualities you have as a teacher. And then you should write some description with regard to experience and your special duties, what exactly you have contributed in your university for teaching. Then most important, please connect with the department, with the teaching beliefs. What is your mission for teaching? The previous experience, related experience. So all these things require for a teaching statement. Now we come towards research statement. Very important. And let me tell you, everybody, if today you are applying for any job abroad, the most important thing that is to be checked even before your publications is your research statement. If your research statement is wrong, if your research statement is not powerful, if you are not giving any impactful research statement, get ready. Even if you have a strong CV, you have 80% chance that you are rejected. You will not get a good call. And that is my experience, everybody, because uh, I know the system. So see this, everybody. Start with your aspirations and goals. What goal you have in your life with research? Why you are there? My goal is that I want to create the most effective data center in next five years. 
my goal is that i want to make an optimized algorithm for sensor communications which is going to touch the near future with 100 percent efficiency in next two years this is my goal this is my aspiration understand the goal so you should write what i value and what i am looking for why you are important because let me tell you if they require a position they, you also require a position so they also care for a good people so make yourself that you are valuable for them sell yourself this is the answer you have to make your value in their eyes that yes this is the person i'm looking for so after that first of all this is the general statement every document should not be like inch 0 0.5 that i'm going to show you the top of the page should consist of your contact information followed by date as well as the employer name and address salutation hiring person's name total document should be one page or less most important then you should introduce yourself most I, I will give you these presentations no problem so introduce yourself properly body paragraph you should also think of your future why you should be valuable for that organization why you think that you are fit for that position in the near future and after that write yourself for the conclusion very important and writers of recommendation and your referees they are all checked so you see over here now this is the sample which 90% uh, people make mistakes see this you have to write the date you have to write your company name company address salutation so dear the hiring manager or the hr manager or whosoever the contact person is if you find any statement in the jobs or post of fellows or anything you will find that there is a contact manager so introduce yourself first of all you can see over here who you are and what position you are applying Sir, I am Dr. Anand Nair and I am professor in the university and I want to apply for postdoc fellow or a distinguished professor in your university. Introduce how you heard the position. What is your network, research gate, ACM digital magazine, so that the person should be informed that I am getting good posi uh, positions from this type of area. So state your degree, qualifications, and in the close make a strong claim that why your qualifications and your current situation is better. Then first of all, you should demonstrate your teaching skills, then your research skills, how better you are the professor, what accomplished you have done, that you have won the award, you have done your good research recently with 10 impact factor, you are collaborated with this lab, you are visiting professor to this, to this university, very important. And then you should recite that why you are the strong candidate, why you are always self-motivated and reference your documents that, okay, I'm attaching these documents and thank you. Now this I'm going to give you the example sample, which is a perfect sample for all of you. You can see I'm applying for a, this position. What I learned from this person, whether it's a person, no problem, whether it's a person association, please mention that and see this currently what you are doing and currently my professional skills, why I'm better. So what you have done right now in this area, because let me tell you, ladies and gentlemen, in India, we sometimes make wrong positions in the department. Yes, we make wrong positions. What we do? We require assistant professor in computer science. We require associate professor. No. Now the thing is changing. In the foreign universities, we look for assistant professor in cybersecurity, associate professor data science. We are looking for a professor who is only mentioning the grant projects and is able to demonstrate skills on data science, deep learning or all these things. So you should be specialized in your subject, very specialized. So if the management of many institutions are listening to me, so be specialized and hire the people who are actually fit for three or four specialized subjects so that they can improve the department and they can bring some grants on those particular subjects. So be specific. Okay, so simply writing assistant professor for computer science, associate professor for mechanical will not fetch you anything. Maybe you can get a simple person. So see this, what is my previous experience, professional experience? What is my previous research projects, everything? And why you think, why you think, why you are motivated that yes, I am the right candidate for this job. So after that, go for best regards and your name. So this is what after that you have to attach your CV, you have to attach your achievements, teaching, research statement, everything, they, uh, even the letter of recommendations, the letter of references, everything you have to attach. Then only I'm saying that I am actually interested to evaluate your proposal. So even after this type of proposal, no doubt you have less SCA publications, but you think, but I'm thinking that you have the potential to go for good potential of research. So sell yourself, make yourself that you are the best and you are capable person. So now illustrate. Now let me tell you most important thing. Always illustrate that you are the unique in a personal way. Why you are unique? Why? What are the special skills you have? So the teaching statement. Now let me tell you. You should always mention that, okay, I'm the teacher of these, these subjects, and I have evaluated these projects. 
I have evaluated the students on these aspects. How you evaluate the students? Let me tell you how I evaluate is that that I give the students projects. I give the students problems. I don't give them what is a boring assignment that, OK, what is this? What is that? Sorry, it's a bullshit. You should evaluate the students on base of projects and some solutions. I regularly give them quiz. I, re I regularly give them sample surprises. I regularly give them, OK, let us uh, you take up, uh, uh, you take a topic. Now the lecture is over. Take a topic. Let us discuss who can be the volunteer and who can speak for 10 minutes. And let's ask the questions for them. You should build the leadership skills. So the statement of your teaching philosophy, the quality of teaching demonstration, very important. And you should always narrate what is the idea that conveyed to you? What is the purpose? What are the awards that you have? And get an interview and clarify one's teaching. Very, very important, everybody. Everything is very important. So in terms of consideration of teaching statement, nobody will guide you this thing. Very important. And this is even a part of research. So I believe students learn best by this. Why you think? I believe the role of teacher is. I see my responsibilities of an instructor as a metaphor for teaching as what is your skill, knowledge skills and psychological skills. So very important, everybody. Now you can see that as a teacher, we are even lagging many things. So if you are a teacher, you are teaching. Even I'm teaching in my university. I have to make it sure that what kind of knowledge skills I'm having, creative skills and psychological skills, how I attach myself to the students and how the students and me attach to solve the problems. Only then they can take me as a mentor. And that's why I'm getting a line of students for the university where the students are waiting even for to get my seat for the master's and PhD. Students are waiting even, I'm saying. So why these are important and how they have to be accomplished in the class, very important. So always think that a philosophy and the student learning and inclusive learning environment, it should be mentioned in your teaching philosophy and statement. And now most important thing is, Always provide concentrate examples on illustrations from your own experience, wherever it is possible. So nobody is going to guide you. Please concentrate on illustrations. How better you are the teacher is. If you are taking a book in the, uh, in the class and you are discussing only a program, everything, you are an ordinary teacher. But if I'm going in the class with some new notes and I'm giving the thinking power that, okay, rather than I demonstrate that what is for loop, I should demonstrate how the for loop works, what is the impact of for loop and what conditions we should put the for loop. Then the students can have the mind thinking that, okay, we can solve the problem with the for loop. Let me tell you, ladies and gentlemen, that if you are working in the class of software engineering, don't consider that, okay, making them teach the waterfall model completes your job. No, the job is not completed. The job is only half done. I can say 40% done. Understand how the students can apply waterfall model. Discuss with them that, okay, I am the client and he is the developer. They are talking to each other. They are doing some requirement study, which model you will fit. So make them think that how they will apply their teaching in the real time to solve the problems. So making that student only convey that concept only, it's not teaching. It's just a basic called giving them a knowledge. Overview knowledge that can be done by YouTubers also. So you are a teacher, think differently. So always have the components, make yourself distinctions and cite all the names as appropriate. So keep it brief. Don't make empty statements, make a discipline, and don't portray students' institution negatively as a burden. Don't reproduce your CV and do keep it as a whole. Most important. So never stretch and hide the truth. And let me tell you, it is a, I'm saying openly right now on the platform that uh, sometimes you can say lie. Okay, but the lie should not be hurting, that it should be caught that, okay, you are a serious liar. So always, always mentioning always a truth, it is not even better also. So never be, you can see over here, never be too honest. Do self-regulate. Don't shoot yourself in the foot. Okay, so be having a effective personality is very important. So while using a generic statement, don't hurt your job application. Make symbolic statements and proclaimed histories. And the mo why the teaching statements are challenging, that is the reason because the audience and the expectations are unclear. You can be put into any job or any teaching work. The general is rarely explained. Please put your responsibilities, everybody. And we have variations. We have sometimes the obvious role. Sometimes we have a challenge. So in terms of research statement, very important. You can see that we have one to two pages outline. We should connect our research interest. We should find our CVs, research findings. And most important, we should find ourselves in a position that I am the person capable to bring the funding. Yes, everybody, if in USA or you come abroad, 
you will be surprised to know that even most of the institutions like those people who can bring the funding projects. So funding projects and publishing SCA publication will make you on a strong position. That is the two main things that are expected. And that is your yearly target that every person has to accomplish. Compatibility, research needs and productivity. Very important. So always show the links between your research and teaching. Like me, I'm saying, like I can give you my example that if I'm producing a class of software engineering, even I'm publishing good papers on IEEE XS that, okay, how we can solve the testing problem, how we can solve the bug severity problem, what is bug bounty? I'm taking my students to hackathons that, okay, we can solve a problem, we can make a good app. So don't think that only being a programmer that uh, or a teacher of programming can fetch you something. Make yourself worthy that, okay, we are doing some research, we are making some projects, we are making some apps that are on the app store, we are going for hackathons. So get a second or the third option. Most important, that's why I'm saying have connections. So always check the spelling, grammar, and punctuation. Because sometimes even the teaching and research statement, when I'm going to evaluate a person, I find lots of mistakes there. Always have good references, everybody. Make it sure that if you're applying for a good position, at least the person should have a respectable and a decent position. Sometimes what we see that you're applying for assistant professor and your references are also assistant professor. No. If you're applying for a research professor or you're applying for a postdoc fellow, at least your guide should be in the references whom you have actually done the research. And at least I'm saying openly that if you're writing research papers with some good collaborators, add their names into their references because they will be the persons who will always be praising for you. So don't think that if you are in an institute writing the name of your director or dean R&D will fetch you something. No, they will not fetch you something. Remove them. So main thing is that whom you are researching, and how you are able to make an effective link between you and your references that can give us good speak for your words. Okay, so think from the brain. Don't think to impress someone. The, the reality is a fact. Okay, because it is your career, you have to improve. The other person is on the position. You are finding the job. The other person is not finding the job. So be present and be the best for best of ourselves and always have a plan b and plan c that okay if i'm applying for a research professor no problem if they don't agree me i can become a postdoc fellow but i can be a teaching assistant have always a plan b and plan c and that's what we have to see that in terms of short supported by evidence unique and memorable connected confident factual coherent and everything should be there in terms of research and everything so here are some of the links of YouTube channels that I have given. And uh, let me tell you, ladies and gentlemen, please watch these YouTube videos. You will say that if we are applying for the job, what common mistakes we actually do in our CV also. So most important YouTube links, I will be sharing the presentation with Dr. Arun later. And this is what are the resources that you can see in terms of pedagogy teaching, that how you can improve your teaching and what are the lectures that you can do, how you can connect with the students and how better you can improve your teaching experience as well as research potential. So these are the websites that you can see. So now I'm going to take some questions after five minutes. And now let us start off your basic lecture today that is known as what is research and how to do it. And after this presentation, I will take a break for two minutes in that you are most welcome to ask me questions regarding your jobs and some basic foundations of research. Now, what is research, everybody? Some people say that, okay, I have published a paper. Okay, it's a research. No, sir, I have solved a problem. Sir, but my research paper is not coming. Okay. Sir, I have given a paper in a predatory journal. And sometimes people say that, okay, sir, this is a good journal, but I say it's a very bad journal. Why you have posted this paper to this journal? I will be also showing you that it is not vigilant that, okay, sometimes you're getting a paper in a good SCA journal, but let me tell you, sometimes even getting an SCA journal, it, uh, it is bad. It is a bad journal because every journal has its own audience. So now let me tell you, I'm going to give you some tips and tricks that what is research and how to do it. After that, we come towards advanced topics. So prepare yourself, first of all. Prepare yourself that are you belonging to this field? Do you have a creative mind? Do you have a strong network? And do you have the will to write the paper exactly? Are you able to convince the readers that, okay, I'm a separate person and I'm able to solve a problem? Okay, and let me tell you, ladies and gentlemen, writing a review paper is not a problem, but always writing a review paper and always writing a, a practical paper, it is always a problem. So have a mixed things. Okay, have a mixed methodology that I am efficient to do research in all aspects of times. So see this, everybody is being a top student enough. Neither necessary and neither sufficient. I, I and I'm saying openly, even some people ask me, sir, are you an NITN? Are you an IITN? No. 
I'm not a NITN. I'm not a IITN. I have not done my PhD from a state university. I am working in a foreign university from a private university PhD. But the main answer is that I know my research and I'm able to solve the problems and I'm having high impact factor journals and have good connections. That's all. That is what we need. So don't think you are not getting admission in a state university or a NIT or IIT and will impact your career. It is not. The work will impact your career. If you are even in an IIT and you are just sitting and doing some research with your scholars and just publishing in an ordinary paper, no boost is there. But if you're a private university player and you are regularly keeping up your connections, you are regularly improving your knowledge and you are improving high end papers one by one, people will come to you. So answer yourself. It doesn't matter with marks and the degrees. It matters with the skill and the knowledge to solve the problem. So do you know your intellectual or mental limit? This is very important. So ready for failures. Even we fail. Even sometimes my paper get 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 failure, but we but we the but the show must go on. So are you extremely motivated? Yes. The most important thing is passion. Things will not stop you. You have to make the things work for you. And research is not a job. Everybody, this is my fact. Everybody. Everybody asks me, how do you write, sir, so many papers, how many chapters? I always say to them, research or teaching could be a job for you, but it is my hobby. I feel relaxed when I'm teaching. That's why I feel energy. Even right now, many people ask me, that's sir, how you are so much energetic? Because for you, maybe I'm a teacher right now, but for, but for me, I'm doing a hobby. I'm enjoying my teaching right now. I'm, I love to give education. So that's why teaching and research is my hobby. It's not a job. Money and recognition will come for you. They will search for you. So what is research, everybody? What is the difference between a homework problem and a research problem? Now, let me tell you, if I give my students, uh, now let me tell you how I make my assignments a research problem. Now, if I give, now 90% people will agree with me. If you are giving a student, write traditional software development models. Any student can just go to Wikipedia. They just copy paste and they give you assignment. Okay, sir, this is eight marks. This is nine marks. Okay, you are done. But if I'm giving a student, what is meant by waterfall model? identify its highlights, identify its advantages over other models, identify its weak points in terms of real-time implementation. And after that, I give a statement that, okay, one person is coming for this much of project of waterfall, identify which model you will go and why you will justify that. So my homework becomes a research problem. So always think that you have to think differently with solving a problem. So probably no, except for a fear. So research is anything but homework. Finding a good problem, finding a good thing is your problem. Even if sometimes uh, people ask me, sir, what problem you will you want to find? I said, research, find a problem yourselves, find a problem in the nearby. So everybody, everything is a problem. You have to find a solution for that. And the, and the manner you are finding the solution to that, that's research. That's all. What is research? If suppose your mother, give, uh, your, your father tells you that, okay, let's go and find the best food in the market. And you are searching for the people because there are many restaurants and you are searching the people you are going for the food tasting what you're doing you're even doing the research to find the best restaurant so that's even your research that's even your homework so research is about pushing the limits that dismiss the problem if the solution is not interesting enough and research is a game let me tell you everybody it's a game for which you have to set the rules but it should not be trivial you are the game player you are the game changer you are the winner or you are the loser so expect your responsibilities so what is engineering research, everybody? Engineering is about optimization. Now, what is optimization? You are making something better. But engineering research is that where there is no limits, unlimited. And you find the ways how we can optimize. Today, challenge your paper that, OK, if I've developed a protocol which is giving 86% result, if I designed a model of machine learning which is 90% accuracy, can I make that model? better than 90%. Can I make that model better than 96%? That's the answer, everybody. Challenge yourself. Think yourself that you are the best of the best of the best. You are the best among you. Don't think that the other person is writing a paper, five papers or 10 papers. Challenge yourself that are you writing one paper that is solving the bigger problem in the world? That is the answer, everybody. That is called research. So engineering is not about invention, but engineering research is not. So explain that even research lays a foundation for invention because you are doing new, you are doing creativity. So engineering research is not science or not empirical science. It is just art of doing the things, art of finding solutions to new problems. So it is close to maths or applied sciences. 
some people ask me that sir what is the difference between computer science and computer applications and some people even don't know what is the difference between computer science applications and even uh, you can say computer uh, engineering so these are the questions which i ask and give the challenges to everybody even i asked many developers also what is the difference between programming and coding and 90% people failed even some team leaders of a company were not able to give me the answer so these type of things are very basic and simple they will give you a huge methodology of thinking main thing is improve your thinking everybody day by day so good engineer let me tell you this is important a good engineer need not to be a good researcher but a good researcher need not to be a good engineer yes everybody it is uh, so if you are a phd don't think that you are a good researcher yeah maybe you cannot write a research paper effective research paper but even if there is a mtech person there are some people who are not interested for phd but they are yet writing a better research papers than a phd also so different levels level 1 research assistant level 2 homework like research build your confidence level 3 formulating your problem and solve it this is where you start your phd so first of all challenge yourself are you fit for the phd or are you doing the phd just to go for promotions make yourself mentally ready that are you for phd or you are not for phd so level 4 everybody formulating problems for others to solve very important even i give the problems to others that okay can you solve this problem can we solve this problem can we improve like this can we make a paper like this can you make this things more working on this parameter so this is called reliance and that's what we can say knowledge is what to do important rather than knowing how so answer yourself what exactly you are doing in the field what you have contributed in the field the answer will come to you that are you doing gesture for your career or not so you have to answer this question so the answer will come to you so what's a good research the first thing is novelty what improvement if you are just writing the paper with just language change it's not novelty it's a bullshit second thing simplicity many people say me sir we want to write a english paper english is not heavy please if you have a not good english no problem you have grammarly you can improve that main thing is that your contribution should be simple it should be able to be understood by the people it keep it simple please universality have a vision that you are doing the things in the right direction like in software engineering we say verification and validation so what is verification are we making the things right and validation are we putting the things right direction so what we have to do we have to merge these two verification validation towards universal so recognize you recognize a good research result if it keeps you at all night and keeping you like a first aid sometimes some problems don't make me sleep yeah everybody i don't sleep sometimes that okay let me so solve this problem like this and that and that's the reason i always keep on working i'm always finding solutions i'm always collaborating with the people i'm always calling them so how to do research and common misunderstandings think research is only for the genius no misunderstanding is there research is for everybody everybody but the main thing is putting the things on the right direction and you have right connectivity and your mind is clear that what you are and where you want to go your mind should be clear think yourself is a genius no i am a student i am not a genius i am if even if i am writing 100 sca papers i will all again say that maybe after 6 7 years if i am not uh, improving myself i will be gone challenge yourself not as a engineer or a researcher challenge yourself as a thinker becoming a thinker and becoming a sol solution and becoming a consultant it's a better it's a way ahead of becoming a researcher think you need to know everything the subject in advance no even today even if i have written 10 papers sca papers in blockchain say even even today i'm reading lots of even i'm right now reading five books on my ipad on blockchain and i'm gaining lots even i'm uh, i'm gaining more things on smart contract solidity ethereum and even what can be done in the real time i'm improving so think you should wait for the most important problem to work no be the first one and think a solution is great because you don't find anything no. even if you don't find the proper solution even it's a, it's a research so how to do research be confident and humble this is motivation lecture right now be both critical and collaborative and remember everybody if your paper gets rejected so don't need to worry it's a part and parcel of your life so don't finish the collaboration be ambitious and realistic 
be proactive and willing to take a chance because uh, 100 people are there right now but i reply to one are you giving me the chance am i giving you the chance are you deserving the chance are you the correct person that i should give you the chance prove yourself so the only way to improve is to learn things that you are not afraid of be not afraid so the research feels like an endless cycle you can see between sense of success of failure and success and overconfidence and self doubt so beware and research needs faith in everywhere and interesting things to discover maybe let me tell you when i started the research problem with my guide and my phd my guide told me that okay let's improve this protocol at least 40 percent but you will be surprised everybody you can check my thesis my protocol was actually improved 96 percent as compared to more than 22 protocols we started with a target of 50 percent but we landed at the result of 96 percent and after that i got three essay papers from my thesis only and even from my results only and i was having the target of one i put three and my guy told, Were you, uh, were you, uh, are you happy? I said, no, maybe we can improve more. And now I'm working on my more enhanced protocol and I'm thinking to get into sensor journey. So keep on thinking, keep on learning. So now let me go towards the third presentation. So more on research and methodology. Uh, Dr. Arun? Dr. Arun? Yes, sir, tell me, sir. Yes, I hope you are all enjoying. So please keep the questions ready. After this, I will be taking some questions. Okay. Okay, sir. Okay. Thank you so much. After that, I will be coming towards more collaborations. So okay. let's talk of some research and methodology. So let me tell you, don't confuse the word research methodology. Research is different. What I've told you, it's the main thinking that how you want to improve what thing, but how you will improve, how you are going to improve. That is your methodology. So you are doing your PhD, that's another thing. But what you are doing in research, what field you are researching and how you are researching, how you are improving that field, that is your methodology. Okay, so don't confuse research methodology. It is research and methodology. So what is research defined? Some classifications that I'm going to give you. Define and discuss the methodology and I'm going to give you the research process, what to do exactly. And we will discuss creativity and its research role in research process. So what is research, everybody? Basically, we all say it's an approach, but I say it's not an approach. It's the art of doing creativity. So obtaining and confirming new and reliable knowledge. So that's why I'm saying you that there are lots of sources. I will be discussing some tools of research also. So the main thing is you have to obtain new and reliable knowledge. Knowledge are many. There are many papers on one field, but are they reliable? Are they good? Are they giving you new information? So that's what we have to find. So we have to go for an orderly series of steps. We have to find the purpose. What is the purpose? Purpose means new knowledge. Why you are doing the research. So purpose lands for your objectives. And that should always be new. Prove yourself that, okay, sir, I am doing this thing better. Why you are doing this thing better? Because you put the research that, okay, these are the things that are not accurate. And I will make these things better. So that will be your foundation statement. That's why I'm always saying my research scholars and to all of you that please, first of all, find the problem, do your research. What is existing things about and what you need to be solved, that is your objective. So that's the general definition and that applies to all disciplines, whether you are management people, whether you are physics person or electronics person. So maybe you're designing a circuit that, okay, one person has designed the circuit, but what is the drawback of that circuit? Is the circuit new? Yes, okay, sir. Now let us improve this circuit by these elements and let's make this better. So that's what we can say, making the things better and better. That's called research. And how you will make it, that is called your methodology. So the truth, you can say, was not used in definition. So truth is not there. Okay, so if you can say that if you are doing something good, you are improving something, it's a research. Even if you are not able to do something, even that is research. So always be positive. So research is not accidental discovery. No, it is never. So may occur in a structured review process. It's a structured review. It is not accidental. So usually it takes form of phenomena. And most important thing, it may lead to structured research process to verify and understand the observations. So research is not, I'm going to continue with this, data collection. You are collecting the data, 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 and data like many people are doing in terms of data science and machine learning. It's not research, it's collection. That data, 
will fetch you with some methodology that whether that data was reliable or not. So data collection is not research. So that's an intermediate step. So yes, everybody, if you're going for a questionnaire, it's not a part of research. Research will start when you will use that data and you apply your methodology and bring something new. So don't consider your objective that, okay, 90% papers come to me that, okay, we will collect the data in thesis. Okay, sir, we will observe the existing protocols. Oh my God, these things are a bit obvious. You have to collect the data. You have to do literature. Otherwise, how you will find the problem? So don't consider reading the existing papers, reading the existing literature is your objective. That is not your objective. That is the basic thing to start your research. So collecting reliable data is a part of your research process, but it is a part. It's not an objective. So searching the published results, see this. And that is a problem in most of the thesis that we find. So please think in the, even, even I receive lots of papers in the review process. They say that, okay, the main part is to find out the research papers, to find out the libraries. What is this? This is not research. This is a part of research. This is not your objective. This is the work that you have to do in order to find the solution to the problem. So this is an important early step, the first foundation step. So foundation step is never an objective. This will give you an objective. So let me tell you, searching the publishing research is the foundation step. It, it will give you the objective. It is not your objective. Okay. So everybody, please understand. Giving the objective is different thing, but going to the objective is different. Thing. So research process always includes synthesis and analysis. That is your analysis. Bit. So just reviewing the literature. Okay, sir, I will do the literature of these protocols. I will compare the existing protocols. My God, this is not research. This is the foundation step. So research is. So what is research? This is, this is going to lay the foundation for PhD people. The first thing is searching for explanation, phenomena, and causes. So, think, so answer your questions. What, how, and why things occur? What is the problem in the existing words? How you will solve that problem? and why the things are occurring. Sir, I have got 20 protocols. These protocols, some of the protocols have energy problem. Some of the protocols are not secure. Sir, some of the protocols are having routing overhead. Okay, sir, now we take five of these protocols. Now we will find some solution that how we make the protocol better than this. So this is called interactions. And the main thing is we should have plan and management. We should have the process to be become creative. That's why I'm saying you learn creativity, learn, think and do. Okay. So always have a well and conducted research in terms of application. What is the real time result? Some people say, okay, sir, we will draft an encryption algorithm for what? Cloud computing, sensor communication, ad hoc networks. What are you doing? So always have a potential application that should be well designed and you should be aware of that. So always say that failure will not going to stall you. So only thing is that why the failure occurs because you are not trained. And the most important thing is you didn't do your homework well. So researchers don't provide adequate interpretations and guidance, but I'm going to tell you the tools today. Let me tell you everybody that 60% of the thesis, if they have the problem, it is only because that they have not done the basic foundation correctly. They have not searched for good papers. And sometimes some of the papers that I see are from predatory journals. So I'm not, a, uh, I, I'm not the enemy of predatory journals, but the main thing is I'm the enemy that why you are not, not doing the things correctly in the right direction. That is the biggest uh, question to, uh, of mine to you. So researchers are main persons who will help the users to find the solutions to the problems. So public research is good. And main thing is you should have the object properly. I will be showing you how to write a paper, how to define the objective. I will be showing you. So private research may not be rigorous. So you should define these type of research. The first thing is to define the criteria, classify, whether it is arbitrary or whether it is artificial. So in terms of basic research, what is the basic in which you are finding some facts and relationships? What is applied? You are finding some solutions in order to solve a particular problem. And the most important thing is whether you are finding the problem on your own basis or whether you are taking a project basis. So that's why I'm saying everybody, sometimes we even work on a dummy problem. Yeah, we've, if you go to the guide that, sir, please give me a problem. What is this problem? Maybe I can challenge this problem that, okay, the work has already been done. I received a thesis 10 days back of one university 
and I'm going to reject the thesis after three days. Because why? Because the person has not done the literature properly. He has given me a problem that has already been solved by more than 50 researchers. And I'm giving him a proper explanation that your model is only 68% accurate, but I give you a model which is even 90% accurate. So the main thing is you have to apply your research, keep on thinking. So but the first thing is, you can see over here, the basic research is disciplinary. So in terms of physical, biological, social, and humanities, but in terms of our research, that computer research, we have applied research where we have the subject matter knowledge. What is the subject like blockchain? We apply the problems to find the knowledge. And the main thing is we keep on doing the technology improvement. So in terms of technology, we are only towards applied research. So don't think you are on basic research. So we have to improve the discipline. And we have to find more relationships like all that. And uh, I just give you one or two more tips. Rest you can read the presentation. So we have to find some more foundations of applied research. And the most important like economic theories, like what is supply, demand, price, elasticity. But in terms of computer science, if you have one protocol, how you improve to another protocol, how your protocol is better than this protocol. You know, 90%, I'm going to show you, 90% people, they say that sir, our paper is not getting uh, cited properly because I, I, because I told them afterwards when I read their paper that you tell me that please, sir, remove our paper. Because neither your abstract is proper, neither your analysis is proper, neither your conclusion is proper. I'm going to show you. I will prove it to you that uh, sometimes even getting an SCA paper, you have done a very wrong job. Yeah, you have done a wrong job. So subject matter research, like if you're doing on disciplines or economics, so I will not come to this one. So problem solving, this is where I should focus right now. So this is where we have to design a, a specific problem or decisions. We have to go for certain specific problems that, that is going to be the discipline for today. And we have to find the problem solving research the least durable. So this is where you can do your research in terms of descriptions and analytics that how you identify something, how you improve and what is analytic that how we establish the contact of what is occurred and how it can be improved. So remember everybody. So these type of two research descriptive and analytical. These two are the only researches that we can do in the matter of computer science. So now let me talk of methodology. So this is what you will do. So once you are done with that, yes, sir, I have done my literature. I have read this much of papers. Now I'm able to solve what is my research direction. I know my objectives. Now how you will go to solve that objectives? What is your methodology? What is your method? That is what we can say. So what is methodology? It is an approach to inquire a particular field. And what is the method? We have to study the techniques and tools. So everybody, let me tell you, there is a difference between methodology and method. I again repeat, methodology is what? What you will do the approach. Okay, sir, first of all, I will try to find some simulation. I will do emulation. I will do like this and that. This is your methodology, how you will do the work. But the question is, what tool you will use, what programming you will use, what procedure you will apply for particular objective. That is your method. So always remember in your objectives, when you're doing your thesis and when you're doing your research paper, please mention your research clearly in terms of methodology. What is the methodology? What is the new things? And what is the method to solve your research? So that's why we say the aim and objective of the paper is to solve this problem. That is the methodology via this optimization problem. But how you solve that we can say that we have done experimentation and we found that. So in abstract, Find the baseline, find the methodology, then write your method and then your conclusions. That is the perfect abstract. So I will be showing you more things about that. So this you can read. So now the process of research, the first step. Now this is going to be the start of the FDP or you can say the start of the main aspect. First thing is process should be initiated with a question or a problem. What is the problem? What is the question? What you're going to solve? Second thing, what is the goal and objective? How you will solve that question? What is the design? How you want to achieve those objectives? Then what are the results which are generated by conducting the research? And last but not the least, that is your analysis. And let me tell you everybody that even I'm sorry to say, I have seen lots of researchers doing the research that after showing their tables and graphs, they are coming to conclusions. So please note it down before you come to conclusions, give the analysis. 
that okay our research has concluded that our protocol or our technique is better in this this percentage on this parameters against these these uh, uh, you can say baseline studies so this is where we do the analysis part and that is what i will tell you how to read the paper so this is what my diagram you can see the semantic of research process the first thing is plan and design what is this? first of all is question and problem second thing is objective formulation keep on doing with the formal training plan and design the research generate the research results interpret and design and then you will find that what are the people and how the process is getting integrated so the research requires proper imagination intuitiveness intuition and curiosity so the most important thing is gather the previous developed knowledge that is your literature exchange the ideas with the researchers with your guide apply deductive knowledge that okay what is required what is not required look at the things in a proper alterations questions yourself search for more problems take the risk to improve something and find uncertainties and after that the most important thing is creativity may provide you the difference between satisfactory and outstanding results that is your creativity so now i'm going to take some questions on youtube so uh, dr arun i would sir, like I to question, one minute one minute I would like to take some questions now yeah, one minute sir one minute i will be sharing the question yeah uh, i will be giving uh, now i will be putting towards more hidden information for a phd for that okay so this will be in how to select the research topic and how to do the research like all these things okay so sir is my screen visible yeah yeah i am able to visible your screen yeah. yes i have one uh, yeah i will be i will be showing you some uh, journal selections for that when the tools of selection will come so kindly tell the major difference between paid and non paid journals so let me tell you everybody the mo major important difference is that first of all find that most of the paid journals are now getting less recognitions even i am taking the name also like i triple access plus one journals they are getting open access so many universities even don't recognize in our country in india and other countries that to have a paid journal so unpaid journal are better so if you are publishing the paper in a sca journal which is free of cost that is better so if you are going for a good research collaboration in the near future only think to get in the unpaid journal that is my first suggestion so that is the difference so uh, some of the journals are giving scopus coverages after the coverage it is scopus or not every year let me tell you ladies and gentlemen that this uh, 10 uh, five days back scopus list has come so scopus list is only one year back okay so now you can see that the year is only 2019 so 2020 will come in 2021 so you can see every year they find the list and even the list is on scopus.com that those journals which are now not included on scopus database so you have to find so kindly say how to find the data for research i will be showing you some websites now so how to choose the title of research proposal that will be there in the that will be there in the uh, next presentation so wait for that so how to choose that uh, which one is good writing literature review at beginning of research or at the final like my god everybody this is this is the most important question writing the literature review is the foundation element let me tell you even before methodology and the method is the foundation line that is a literature so the first thing is to find more and more works what is being done what is the latest trend how much you know about the field that is literature start with literature please this is the start point not at the ending point please so don't so how to balance teaching research and administrative task in uh, private colleges apart from family responsibilities so uh, this is a very personal question so let me tell you if you want to balance teaching okay this is the first thing if you want to balance teaching first of all be creative and first of all you find uh, you have to find that okay which subject i am good at and how better you can treat the subject how better you can prepare the subjects give the time for research you have to find the time even when i was in a private college in india i devoted my time every day 3 hours that okay these 3 hours no work other things i have to do my research but for college administrative responsibilities we know that in, i'm saying openly that indian colleges have most of the stress on nac and nba only on the file works but over here in foreign universities we don't have any file works or paperwork like that so uh, administrative responsibilities i cannot promise like that so this is a negative thing i'm sorry so how to i will be giving you this title now sir i have struggling for acceptance of papers in general most of the times i have received the comments regarding presentations not good how i rectify 
tomorrow i am going to give you some hidden information some secret information that paper will never get rejected so re get ready for that so how to identify quality of written research paper how to find yes i am going to show you the tool right now uh, that will be letpub that how to find the journal because actually the questions that you are asking is that after the break that we will be covering so uh, i'd said tell about the phd entrance exam so regarding that entrance exam if you are a net qualified so i would like to tell you that uh, it is better that you can skip the entrance exam but uh, regarding if you come for the foreign universities like all that so the first important thing is they see is your existing uh, master thesis as well as the publications so over there you have to prove yourself that you are the researcher you have some publication track record and the most important thing is you are a problem solver you have to prove them so is it necessary to publish all my results of before thesis it is actually mandatory that you publish all the results in the journal uh, before the thesis has been written or during the thesis has been written because sometimes even let me tell you when i have even done my phd viva my one paper got acceptance after i did my viva yes because of the slowness of sea journals so there is no need to worry but the most important thing is publish entire your all researches all of the objectives all of your analysis in the good sea journals that is important yes i will be showing you how to choose the research topic and uh, i will be showing you this quality right now so after 5 10 minutes we will be starting with these type of things dr arun not done sir yeah please take the feedback side by side after 5 minutes we will be uh, uh, starting with this title now sir rather to post the feedback right now yes sir you can share the screen of mine please no sir rather to post the feedback right now yeah you can uh, post the feedback right now for 5 minutes after that you can go for the feedback after 30 minutes okay sir thank you now now i am taking a break for 5 minutes after that we will start the session that is uh, you can see i am going to share my screen now so hidden information for phd and how to handle the guide and how to start preparing for phd that is what we will discuss after 5 minutes and i hope the participants are enjoying they can write on youtube comments if they are having participants can share their feedback right now after that i will be coming towards more advanced works Uh, Mr. Kiran Kanwar has uh, asked me question. How should I start my PhD after long gap of seven years? It doesn't matter. You want to do your PhD after seven years or ten years of your degree or anything. The main thing is that you need to have a strong research proposal. I'll be showing you how to make that proposal. Actually, right now I have actually not given you much information. It will be given after the sessions like that. After two, three, after two, three minutes. then you will say that we are changing ourselves uh dr arun dr arun dr arun yeah i will be giving you the link just wait dr arun Yeah, you can post your question here, Mr. Abhishek Rana. No problems. I am starting in one minute. Yeah, Mr. Rahul, please hold me. Yes, uh, how to start with new simulation software? I mean, learning. that uh, i i i assume that you have ns2 or ns3 so it is better that you can start with documentation so every simulator has a documentation so start with the documentation learn its syntax and learn its constructs and after that you can start practicing with the basic simulations and all the basic uh, demonstrations that are available on the open source websites so you can start with the basic documentation yeah i'm uh, i'm going to increase the level now Yeah if anybody has a question please ask me thank you so much we will be starting in 1 minute now thank you
in blockchain there is no simulation tool you have to learn programming that is uh, basically that is called solidity yes but sir machine learning which fusion is better for medical imaging i i only recommend that uh, if you have seen my other lectures we are only working on deep learning neural network that is the answer for medical imaging because i'm researching on covid 19 also so that's the answer yes i'm going to give you no no problems for that Yeah, I will be giving you the BCA machine learning tools tomorrow because that's another question. So, uh, Dr. Arun? Uh, tell me, sir. Yes, we are starting, sir. Thank you. Okay, sir. Okay. Thank you. I hope participants are happy. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Thank you so much. Now, ladies and gentlemen, get ready because my this lecture is purely focused on those people. Who are actually going to start the phd and who are actually doing their phds okay the lecture is going to give you a remarkable information and after that i will be coming more towards research papers because i want you to please have a strong foundation for research uh dr arun uh, tell me sir uh, sir okay. if the lecture goes uh, for more time please be with me okay thank you so much for that okay, sir. okay. okay. Yeah, because actually i believe that uh, if the lecture is going on good and uh, if the participants are learning then there is then we should not see the time we should only see the information yes sir yeah thank you right so now, much uh, right now 250 plus sir and watching in the youtube also. okay and i hope your principal sir is also enjoying i think he is also joining back now or other people also in your institute no sir no sir okay okay no problems only so, dean research alone is there sir yeah thank you so much uh, so i hope he is enjoying thank you so uh, ladies and gentlemen now let me tell you i am going to give you this title and this is my personal experience this is my experience that i am going to give you hidden information for phd and how to handle the guide and how to start preparing yourself for phd this is important topic now let me tell you this is a, an important quotation never confuse education with intelligence even I've seen those people in my class who were my batchmates, they were not getting good marks, but now they are the team leaders. So never confuse education with the intelligence that, okay, I'm an NITN, I'm an IITN, I'm the best among the best. No. In research and in terms of real time, maybe you are not so successful. Okay. Because in my, in my team also, there are two or three students, even they are not even the college graduates and they are doing machine learning problems even better than a PhD. Because I love them because they're giving me the answers. So see this, everybody, long time ago, people who sacrificed their sleep, family, food, laughter, and others enjoy of life were called saints. But now I'm saying openly, they are called PhD students. You know why PhD is getting frustrated? This is my experience, everybody. Why we people say that PhD is uh, called Pagal Hone Kadar or uh, permanent head damage or these type of things or like uh, funny things like that. Why we call like this? because we are not doing the research in right direction that is 60 percent our guide is not cooperative it is 25 percent and rest 15 percent just re uh, remember my lecture that i'm going to show you right now that our text and our approach is not good yeah that is why the phd is becoming frustrated okay so i'm going to give you the proper guidelines how to exactly do your research in a proper and in an enjoying manner so you see over here so PhD system, it's a very important quote by Freeman Dyson. The PhD system is a real root of the evil of academic sonobari. Yeah, some people say that I'm a PhD. Okay, I know everything. So people who have PhD consider themselves as priesthood and inventors generally don't have PhDs. Everybody, ladies and gentlemen, let me tell you, most of the patents that are being filed by industry professionals, they are not even PhDs. And they're filing high end terms. Dr. Arun, please, disturbance is coming. Thank you so much. So the 15 tips for the PhD student in their first week. Now start the PhD like this. Find a coffee mug. Always liquidate yourself and always make it sure that you enjoy minimum eight hours of sleep. This is only for PhD student. I'm saying if you are a professor, you have done your PhD, this session is not for you. But if you are a good going to be a good guide, please make it sure that you give these tips to your PhD student. So please have at least eight hours of sleep. This is the first point. Second point, get their decks and chair. Make it sure it is comfortable. And because this is going to be the most important place where you're becoming a PhD. So sometimes the infrastructure is not good. And this is the most common problem that I have seen. So I have seen that. Dr. Arun? Dr. Arun? 
Excuse me, sir. Sir. Sir, I'm getting disturbed, please. Continue, sir. Continue, sir. sir. Yes, sir. Will, it I'm will not happen, sir. I'm getting disturbed. Sir, once door open, no problem, sir. No one wants to know. Will not Thank you so much, sir. Please, please maintain the silence. I want silence. Right. In right. Thank you so much. Yes, sir. So the third yes, important sir. aspect is Thank do the paperwork. Thank you, sir. The Thank first you. thing is that you find the personal details and the contact information of all the people that are in your department all the people so make it sure that all the paperwork is there in front of you i'm going to share the slide so please make it sure that this slide is available to all of you have access to all the university buildings because sometimes you have to go for premises here and there to find the books papers consultancy all these things have access to your university building most important if you're doing a phd in the regular sense be computationally ready completely ready and let me tell you, please keep your laptop in a proper sense. Please put your passwords and please have access to one printer. Even if you want to buy the printer personally, please buy the printer. Yes, it is very important. And have the office stock supplies, proper pens, highlighters, staplers, notebooks, everything that you require at a particular at your particular table. This is very important, the stock supplies. Number seven, befriend the almighty secretary. Because let me tell you, the most powerful person after your professor is his secretary. In the foreign university, it is very important. You have to talk to my, you have to talk to the people's secretary or other things. So make it sure that you always have the bureaucratic questions ready. Always have limited time. Even I, I say on the phone also that some people they they take an appointment. That sir, we want to take an appointment with you. Please, can you give us a time? So I always tell them on the WhatsApp and even on the email. Please keep your questions ready. One, two, three, four, five, six. So please ask question one, then question two, question three. Because I have lots of calls, have other appointments. I'm I'm a busy man. So in terms of bureaucracy, please be ready that you have limited time and you have got that limited time to solve that queries. Register for the courses, very important for PhD people that, that PhD people don't follow. That if you're doing your PhD in software engineering, please have the latest knowledge of software agile methodologies. If you're doing on wireless communication, enroll your new courses for 5G. I will be giving you the websites like Class Central, Coursera. Please do your courses side by side. If you are working on a simulation, please have a proper manual of simulation and go to workshops, go to webinars and go to attend those people who are actually writing the papers. And let me tell you, those who are actually writing the papers, they regularly give webinars. So you can give them the email, sir, I have seen your research paper. Are you giving some webinar on this technology? They will automatically give you the answer that, sir, we are giving the webinars. You can register for courses. So be collaborative, be interactive, be expressive. Then the word will come to you. Next thing, download the papers. I will be giving you the websites, the tools of research today only. So download your papers properly. And at least everybody, please keep a close eye. Always be aware and be informed of the papers. So don't think that you have uh, 100 papers today. These are your 100. No, maybe after six months, you have to revise your literature review. Maybe other person has given a new research paper or a review paper. Like suppose you're doing a good research on blockchain and healthcare. Maybe the new papers are coming after every 20 days. So you have to keep a close eye on that. So I will, I'm, I will be giving you how to do that. The most important thing that at the number 10 point, before meeting your guide, Please, ladies and gentlemen, even if you want to start your PhD or you're doing your PhD, please don't tell the guide to give you the problem. Don't tell your guide to please give you the problem. Please do your homework. Please do your literature. Read something and discuss with the guide. Please don't go to the guide to have a complete exposure of problem. He can, might be he can increase the problem. Might be he can increase the problem. So please go in a proper sense that I am not going to give any problem to the guide. I am going to discuss with the guide. There is a difference between problem asking and discussion. So have something ready in your hands so that the guide should be helpful that, okay, he has done his work. Now I can help him support it. No person will help you from the scratch. This is a fact and remain. This is a fact. Check previous thesis. I'm going to give you the websites now and craft a research plan. The most important thing is make an idea what detail the research should be, what is your idea, what are your questions, and then meet your guide that, sir, I believe that, okay, I have studied these papers. I am reading this book. Now I studied that, okay, sir, this is the problem that this field is struggling. Can we take this topic? Can we take this topic to the next direction? What I think is that rest depends on you. 
So unless or until you don't give him some proposal, let me tell you, he is not going to entertain you something. Same like th this thing, even I'm getting lots of emails every day, sir, we want to collaborate, sir, we want to have some, uh, you can say some book with you. Oh my God, please do collaboration, do the book, but tell me what do you want to do? What book do you want to have? What collaboration you are interested? I should be specific in that. I'm going to show you the email also, how to give email to the people. So meet your professor. The most important thing is only you meet your professor once you have read some papers and at least you have drafted at least a research plan. If you go empty handed, he will be giving you empty handed. That's the reason you start disturbance and depression from day one. Because why? You are not working. You are dependent on him. Why you are dependent on him? You are doing your PhD. You are going to be awarded for the PhD. He is just the mentor for you. Mentor means that he is just going to supervise your work that in which direction you are right, he will give you the blessing. Okay, please do it. And if you are wrong, then he will tell you. But if you say, sir, I don't know anything, what he will do? He is not concerned. Okay, so make it sure that the guide is not concerned. You are mainly concerned. Make a research plan, then go to him. Meet your colleagues. Who are your colleagues? What projects they are doing? What is the group field that you have? And that's the reason everybody, I always tell people, please be associated with some labs. Very important. Connections are very important, everybody. And be social. Please be social. Okay. So meet them regularly. Invite them for coffee. Let me tell you, I'm saying openly, even sometimes, even sometimes once in a year, I go to two or three places and I invite the people to come to me. Even I come to India and I meet every collaborator of mine and I always tell them, let's meet and let's have the discussion. Even I go to India on my own pocket and I meet them regularly because these are my connections. I have a Skype call every week for uh, every week, at least one time with my every collaborator that, okay, are you okay? Are you doing the collaboration well? Are we happy? Are we doing going for the next work? So if you're not social, you are leaving the things. Let me tell you, the people will leave you. Now the types of PhD guides, most important. See this. The first type of guide is aggressive. He's a difficult person. Okay. So main thing is that hostile peoples are, are, are mostly impolite people. So don't get emotional. Calm down. So if you are, if your guide is aggressive, please calm down and acknowledge their opinions. Because let me tell you, if he is aggressive, he will never guide you. He will first of all give you these things, do like this. He is very aggressive person. So please be polite, calm down. Second thing, complainer. He is never satisfied. He is a complete complainer. But if you have a complainer, let me tell you, try to have conversation with him that, yes, sir, I have solved this problem. Yes, sir, can we go for this? Because he, he is always a complainer. He will always complain that you are not doing your job correctly unless he will not see your jobs. So have something ready for you. Don't go blank with any guide that, sir, I don't know anything how to start. So that's the reason everybody, I'm saying openly that some people, when they ask questions like this, sir, how we start the research, how we do like this, this is called complaining questions. You are the researcher, you have to do some plans, then how can I help you? Because there's many things. First of all, read a book, read a journal, read a magazine know the field, then find out what are the problems in the field and then come to us that, okay, sir, this is a problem. Can you explain me this problem? Can you find me more solutions to this problem? Then I can work on something specific. But you ask, but many people ask me a question on the email, sir, how can I go on, on brain computer interface? Brain computer interface is a very vast activity. Machine learning healthcare is a very vast activity. What do you want me to do? Exactly. This is the question. Be specific then only people will come close to you. Otherwise, otherwise the people will go away from. You. Okay, so make it sure. The third point is called silent and unresponsive claim. So those supervisors, they sometimes they don't respond to the emails. And if they're silent, they are very difficult to respond. So the most important thing is either take the work in your hands or either discuss with your colleagues. So over there, the only networking will only come to you. Even I have seen an, one instance in the university, let me tell you openly I'm saying, I will not take, take the name of the university. You will all laugh at this case. What happened? One day, I just asked one vice chancellor, what is the bad thing and the worst thing that you have seen in the PhD? They said, one student came to us. His main guide came to, under, came to know of his viva after his viva. Because that guide was not uh, good and he was complaining that his work is not good. So the person has taken the co-guide and after the main uh, viva was done, the main guide was being informed. This was the worst thing that I can see in my life. Even I am having some of the stories with me that why the people are making complaints with the PhD supervisors. 
so the fourth one super agreeable friendly so if you are interested let me tell you if if you are really go, if you are really lucky this could be the best guide in, in your life he is the person who will work with you and that will outline the problem for you i am i put myself category if i am the guide i put myself category in this super agreeable friend because i know the problems when i did my phd uh, i i don't get any high end support for, for from my guide i didn't get but i am the other person i don't want to make any person to uh, become a torture person so the main the next five is called wet blanket negative so if this person is a negative so the mo most important thing is ask your coworkers and go to other people have collaborations so if you are into type 5 you are unlucky your phd will will be a disaster know it all well expert so these type of people they boost many things that i know this i know this connection i know that person like all these things but in the end they are they know nothing so they are like a balloon that can burst any time so the main thing is just try to keep yourself abreast with the guide just tell him that okay this is my position and this is what i am planning so if you tell them that okay i am doing like this this is my plan he will be happy and he will give your phd a clear go because you are doing his own thing because this is a person who wants that his person should do all the works on his own types now the type 7 is called indecisive this is a person this if you are a difficult in phd supervisor indecisive this is the leadership of other project be assertive of your ideas and always find the reasons so he will ask you why this why this why this and that's the reason this guide will make you do three phd's in one phd this is one of the most uh, you can say difficult persons to handle in the world and after that type 8 extremely hand off and super busy sometimes people make mistakes that okay i take a, a person who is a professor who is a high administrator and please everybody please don't take any guide in your life who is involved in much administrative activities if he is involved in administrative activities let me tell you 90% he will not guide you because he is automatically very busy then when the time will come to you so if he is an academician he is connected to he is he is publishing papers regularly he is connected to international networks he will be a great guide for you and then he will recommend you so that's what i want to say so today you can came to understand that okay why the guides are difficult and how to choose the guide so before you choose the guide everybody please make it sure choose the guide of your own trait if you are doing into machine learning and image processing the person should have done his phd into machine learning or image processing the person should be well connected to community he should be regularly publishing the sca papers avoid the guide i am saying openly on the youtube channel avoid those guides who are involved in administrative duties much they are not good people they will only work on their administrative activities they will not be a good guide for you this is a fact that that will remain a fact maybe many people will not agree with me but it's a fact that will remain a fact and fourth and important thing never ever even though guide is super friendly never ever go to your guide in a blind fashion go with some homework go with some discussion and go for some solutions but if you go empty headed nobody is going to entertain you you will become negative so i hope uh, everybody is enjoying for this thing now i come to the most important aspect for the research methodology for today developing effective research proposal because many people ask me that sir how can i connect with you how should i send proposal to you what should be done in order to start the post docs and let me tell you daily i am getting lots of emails for collaboration for phd and even for post docs but let me tell you only one or two applications i am interested and even i call to that person that sir i am interested to work for you okay so there is a tech there is a manner that is to be done in order to send a proposal and for connectivity so understand this presentation very important because i told you network network and network this is important if you want a good network wide and network and you have good connectivity with international people you want connectivity for good publication support unless or until you don't write a good research proposal you don't have a good effective personality good email nobody is going to entertain you because we have lots of people why i should entertain you ask yourself everybody why you are special that i should reply an email to you why that professor should reply the email to you maybe he is getting hundreds of emails let me tell you when i submitted my one special issue to 3344 impact factor journals or two impact factor journals my proposal was rejected yes it was rejected and you know 
after three months, my one uh, one editor in chief of a journal, he uh, he gave me one email, sir. Uh, I think you are on the wrong track. I said, why? What is the problem? He uh, he told me, are you on Skype? I said, yes. He gave me a video call. He said, sir, the 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 uh, the, the the special issue which you have sent to me, no doubt it's a good special issue, but if you are seeing this special issue the people require high end papers yes the paper the paper has to be practical the paper has to be written well etc etc but the paper will not come to your special issue because why the people will expect high impact factor and that's the reason we people will reject your special issue you must go for at least five five impact factor journals minimum because you are demanding the papers which are high quality and if a high quality paper will come the person will demand minimum three to four impact factor so after that, I applied to three, four impact, high impact factor journals like Future, uh, future Computing Generation System, Sustainability in Society, 4.6 4 impact factor. Now it is going to be 6.5 or 7 impact factor, God knows. And my special issue was, was accepted by Sustainability in Society in three days. Yes, everybody, sometimes a good paper can get a clear rejection at a lower impact factor because the paper can go to high impact factor. So depend on your proposal, whatever it is. So on that day, I learned one thing that uh, some things are not meant for lower things. Sometimes are even not meant for high impact factor things. So beware. Okay, everybody, let's start. Now, how to create effective research proposal? So the first thing is you can see over here. Now the first thing, first step for your PhD start, first step for your collaboration, and even your proposal for postdoc, and even to impress your guide. Now, let me tell you, postdocs are very limited. PhDs international is very limited. Collaboration, I am having lots of people with collaboration. If I want to add you, why I should add you? How you should give me an email? How you should give me a proposal? So the first thing, what you will learn in this presentation, how you should write a proposal for the university to start your PhD or collaboration, and how you should start a proposal for funding or even for your research grants. This is important. So the preliminary steps, most of the components you can see, the preliminary pages I'm going to show you, introduction, statement of the problem, research objectives, what is your objective, research questions, hypothesis, literature review, delimitations and limitations, design and methods, availability of resources, work schedule, contents and references. So if you have all these things, let me tell you, ladies and gentlemen, then only I'm interested that, okay, you are, uh, you are okay for your postdoc. Suppose if you want to do your PhD for in a foreign university or you do want, are you looking for a postdoc, unless or until I don't get these contents from your email, I'm not interested to go it. Sometimes the email comes, sir, I am a PhD from this university. I want to do postdoc with you. My God, what do you want to do? What is your proposal? And after that, they don't reply. Yes, this is a problem, everybody. So see this preliminary pages should be the title page. You can see the title, name of researcher, student number, supervisor, degree, department, university, whatever it is. Table of content should be your heading and subheading. It should be proper. And abstract should be minimum one or two pages, uh, paragraph, sorry, minimum one or two. What is the baseline? What is the objective? What results you can, uh, what results you have stated right now and what you want to observe? Most important in abstract. So in introduction, Please go for area and broad and background, brief literature review, and you should find out what are the larger studies and broader picture of the literature. I'm going to give you complete research paper, how to write it. Then what is a statement? This is very important, everybody. If you want to go for the guide, please go for this. What to do and why? Yes, sir, I want to design a, a energy efficient routing protocol. Why I want to design? Because till date, no protocol is there. This why word is very important. Why? How? Ask yourself these questions. Problem should be a proper knowledge void or a theoretical conflict. And you should find the proper structure. Always keep your objectives on smart. Nobody is going to tell you. This is important. First of all, indicate what do you attempt to achieve. Okay, sir, I will create a secure and efficient routing protocol. What you expect as a proof of project success. Okay, sir, how you will expect. Okay, sir, I will test my project. I will bring a research grant. I will bring this and that. I will have some resources what are available. What, what are the resources that are available? Okay, sir, I will do literature review. I will do uh, white papers based analysis. How it is related to your overall goal. How you can say that, okay, this objective is my overall goal. And then what is your time? 
okay sir i can do this time in six months okay sir i have the sprint in six months i will do this in six months i will do this and in next one year i will do that this will make an impression to me as a guide and as a postdoc fellow that yes sir this person is actually interested in the project and after that give the importance of study what is the focus organize your study collect your material provide the criteria and what are the outcomes most important so that's the reason everybody that many people fail to get a good guide and even the project grants fail i will be showing you the grants tomorrow so the most important research objectives which you should see over here identify define describe explore generate evaluate select test measure prioritize monitor and track all these verbs should be there inside your objectives so that's the literature that's a proper english that you have to make sometimes uh, people say to find a new routing protocol so to create a new routing protocol this is wrong so maintain your english properly please so the example is research objective should be to find out the methods you can see over here if you are interested like this to find out the methods used for water treatment to determine the feeding habits and to assess the perception so this is what you can say that what you will do what are the methods you will do in terms of to find the objective what you will do what practical aspect in the objective should be there and what you will conclude with the study these all four five objectives should be there in your thesis as well as in your proposal so the research question should be there what are the possible research questions and how to achieve the research and objectives of the study and these are the uh, i will give you the slide so this should be the research hypothesis that what are the hypothesis analysis or null hypothesis that should be there this should be only for management and i just give you now now this is important lit uh, literature review i will be showing you some websites also so a summary what is done so actually let me tell you most of the people when i uh, most of the uh, papers when i do the review i always give them a minor revision that please give in 9 to 10 lines please note it down when you write a research paper please note it down that after literature review that okay and in the literature review please first of all if you mention sheng at l this is the person and always keep the last name first like suppose the person is adir khan so which means khan at l and at l will only come when you have two and more than two authors more than two authors then it will be khan at l in the first line it should be done that what is being proposed after that what conclusion he has drawn and what is the experimental analysis that he has done so this should be concluded in four to five lines and after you do 2 to uh, 25 to 30 literature views conclude in 9 to 10 lines what overall analysis you have done what is the overall additional research that you found that these are the drawbacks in existing study that will lead to the motivation that yes i am doing that work so presentation of literature view is very important so it should be properly existing in terms of significance please conduct the study what are the reasons for study what are the additional knowledge and what are the benefits for the society most of the research grants when i see the research grants proposal they don't say that okay sir this is the benefit for the society just blind reject it and just i would like to give you what are the limitations so what will be the limitations of your study that okay i will collect this much of data i will collect this much of analysis and my study will be limited to 5 to 6 routing protocols so limitations always have boundary of the research and this should be the research design methods which you can see data collection data procedure dealing with ethical issues as well as analysis plan and the plan to disseminate the findings so always have the availability of resources what are your resources equipments in terms of hardware materials in terms of books and literature human resources budget and additional resources and that's the reason everybody i always tell the people that always give a lab also that you are associated with this lab we will be also going for some lab based avenues also so more resources you have the guide will be more happy to help you out and this should be the work schedule everybody 90% people don't write in their proposal that what is the work schedule i always give them the proposal back please go and uh, write your schedule first of all so even in your thesis also please mention the work schedule about the gantt chart so this is the proposed content you can see outline of chapters introduction then literature review what is the design of your study data analysis summary conclusions and recommendations this should be the proposed outcomes that i actually require when i'm going to have some collaboration with you 
So references should be properly up to date. And please, one more important thing, one most important tip for all of you, please don't cite references which are less than six years back. We are in 2020, so don't avoid to take the references from 2012 or 2010 or 1998 or even sometimes 2001. So avoid those. Please maintain a period of six to seven years. I will be showing you the tools now. So have a simple and, and, and uh, straightforward language, precise, clearly organized, and should give you all the relevant information. So best of luck for your research endeavors. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to show you one of my experience that people should, uh, should understand how to write an email. Now you see, I have written one email. Now this is how I give the email to the collaborators that, okay, sir, I want to have collaboration. See, if you are really interested to write an email to the person, see how we write, respected doctor. So don't write dear doctor. Dear doesn't look fine. So respected doctor, his name, good morning or good evening. So please let me tell you, don't give the email in the evening. Avoid the emails purely in the morning and even after the day. If it is better that you can give the email between 9 a.m. to 3 p.m., that is a perfect time to give the email. Sometimes I'm getting the email at 8 p.m. in the night, which means that the person is not interested. Maybe he's giving me the email in a free sense. He's not interested. So it is very important. So I hope you are fine and doing well. It is my, and see how I drafted the email. It's my privilege honor to write an email to such eminent personality, name of your field, which field he is belonging. Your works recently in the area for this field is astonishing. And I have gone through the research paper. What is the latest name of his paper? With this impact factor, I found your results satisfactory or whatever it is. So he should know that he's, you are actually connecting with him. That's why you need him. Okay, see, now let me introduce myself. I am Dr. Anand Nayar, and please focus from the last three years. What is your experience? What are the areas? And what is your latest publication record? Very important. You should introduce in a beautiful manner, first of all. Okay, then see this. Considering the lines of research, same lines that, okay, sir, I am also doing research in sensor. You are also doing research in sensor. I wish to collaborate with you on following aspects. Edited books, which publisher you want. What is the name of the book? What can be the title of the book? Research areas. Mention the areas, please. I believe this email will start a great collaboration between us and soon we can publish good works. And this is important, everybody. Most important, your signature. Most important, because I should know whom I'm going to work with. And let me tell you, everybody goes on one thing that is called Google Scholar and your scooper. So please, in your signature, first of all, see this. First of all, put the logo of your institute. Then write your name. What is your address? See this. What is your official website, your personal link, your website, your Scoopus profile, your Google Scholar, ORC ID, your research gate, and if you are a distinguished speaker or you have a proper links, Publons, Web of Science, and your emails. So now with this, with this signature, I'm able to get almost a brief introduction of that person. So please maintain your email when you're giving an email for collaboration and even to have some postdoc-based information. So this is very important for you to understand that, that many professors don't reply. Yes, everybody, many people, even I don't reply to many emails. You have to make them reply to you. You have to make them connected to you. If your email is properly done, if your email is properly connected, then only I'm saying that, okay, this person is actually connected to me. Then I'm saying that, yes, I'm okay to work with you. So that's the answer, everybody. I will be sharing this content to all of you, okay? Now I'm going to give you the most important thing which everybody is waiting for you. So now let us start. How to read a research paper. Now everybody, I'm, I'm saying you openly. Now today you will understand even those people who are actually listening to my lecture. I know some of the people are very good and even they have published some of the good SCA journals also. Today they will be able to understand that uh, sometimes when they call me that, sir, my papers are not getting cited and how to improve the citations, let me tell you, your paper will automatically attract the citations if the people are attractive to you. Now, suppose, now I give you one question. Suppose I want to design a routing protocol. Okay. Now, rather than I am going to give your name, like suppose 90% papers come to me, a novel routing protocol for sensor network. What is this? This is bullshit. You don't have the name of a routing protocol. How can I mention the name of your protocol in my paper? Your abstract is not giving me the observation that, okay, which papers you have compared the, uh, the protocol. 
you have not given me any analysis which means that you are increasing the time of mine in terms of listening to your paper and i don't want to waste my time let me tell you everybody that whether your paper will be cited or not it only depends on your abstract first yes i will be showing you how to write the abstract this is most important tomorrow i will be having a detailed lecture for that but if your abstract is not good i will be showing you right now your answer will be wrong now let me tell you now if you are doing a phd and you are even doing, going to write a research paper you have to collect some papers but the most important thing is how to read a paper so don't read the paper fully this is a class type 1 type 2 and type 3 reading now let me show you now you will able to understand today that even you have written a paper in sci journal why your paper is not getting proper attention you will understand today so this is my experience again how to read a research paper see this so the first thing is agenda purpose of reading a paper three pass approach now i have having three pass approach for all of you three pass first pass second pass and third pass so if your paper is not under the second pass your paper will be rejected your paper will be gone that okay sir i will not include your paper in this so resources for improving research paper writing and book recommendation what i'm going to tell you so let me tell you everybody most of the researchers are spending the time for reading the papers now let me tell you if you're doing a research in blockchain okay so let me tell you there are tons of the papers so which paper is the best you cannot read whole of the papers if you want to read a paper of 26 pages maybe in one day you can't read one paper also so you have to complete your phd so there is a tech to read the paper now i'm going to give you an expert tech for that you have to select an appropriate research paper it is a particular art yes it's a art everybody and this skill is very rarely taught i have seen lots of research methodology seminars but none of the methodology seminars this is the first methodology seminar in which i am going to give you my experience how to read a paper and how you can save your time when you got so, so many papers that okay sir this paper is okay this paper is not okay yes this is a fact actually it's a art it's a tech now listen to that tech now now see this why to read the paper so the uh, may, the first thing is to write a research paper you have to present in a conference material you have to go for publication and you have to keep yourself updated for a trend so these are the four main reasons that why we actually read a research paper see this now i am having three pass approach now this approach arun sir again disturbance is coming hello no sir no sir no sir you can carry on thank you sir carry on sir carry on sir sir i am getting disturbed actually so i am giving giving you a three pass approach but let me tell you now you will understand that if your approach is not okay for the paper you are gone okay now you will able to understand that even a good high end research paper even it is not a good paper yes i am going to prove you now see this what is the first pass now suppose you have taken 100 research papers now what you will do in the first pass then the first pass general idea general so in this pass you have to take your paper just for 5 minutes now in this you just read now see this read the title now let me tell you now again i am saying you one thing now i am researching on a sensor based protocol and if that title is not giving me a routing protocol name do i should read that paper no because tomorrow that paper will fetch me nothing because i cannot make the graph by using that protocol now in if you see my research papers i always compare those papers which already have some research papers and they've already given some routing name to that protocol so if you are making a particular technique everybody that you have made a protocol that okay sir my protocol name is asfp it should be written in the title asfp a novel protocol or a novel machine learning approach for that give a name proper of the title very important now see this read the title read the abstract and introduction that's all that's all this is the main reading and after that just read the sections and subsetting but ignore other th other thing else now if your title is not okay abstract is not okay and introduction is not okay let me tell you remove that paper so read this this is a first pass now you are uh, now you can answer my question that sir even i have published a paper in five impact factor but why my paper is not getting cited because of this because your paper is out from the first pass and if your paper is getting cited yes it is it is coming to the third pass now see this now read the conclusion and just have a glance over the references what is to be done see this just read title abstract introduction just see the sub sections that okay literature view system model okay 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 that's good now read the ref conclusion what is the conclusion of the paper 
because of this thing abstract introduction and conclusion that will give you the literature that what is actually being proposed in the paper whether this paper is okay for you or not now that's the first pass everybody you can collect 2000 papers but after first pass i'm saying openly you will reduce 40 percent of the papers 40 percent papers will be gone and see this glance over the references and mentally take over what is required and what is to be done because sometimes the references also become the literature in you now you have learned five c's now see this now you can understand what type of paper is this whether the paper is a measurement paper whether this is an analysis or existing approach or whether it's a research prototype now you can understand everybody that if you are not reading the paper properly and if you are not drafting the paper properly your paper will never get recognized Yes, sometimes a good research becomes a very bad research. So what the other papers related to, what's theoretical base you have made in terms of analyze the problem. Now let's come to the second pass. Now see this. Now come to the second pass. Rest you can read in the presentation. Now in the second pass, read the paper with great care. Now you've selected uh, 20 papers that, okay, sir, these papers I passed, that, okay, sir, I will read these papers. Now see this. Look carefully at figures, diagrams, illustrations. And that's the reason, everybody, that figures are sometimes very chinky, clocky. I will show you some software also, which you can take in order to make those figures. I make my own figures with that software, and you can see my papers, how clarity I have in my figures. Pay attention to graphs, very important. That's why I'm saying why the graphs are there, how the errors are there. And sometimes people just show the graphs, they don't show the data. I'm sorry, I'm going to neglect that paper. In the second paper, in the second stage, I'm only focusing on the results. What are your results? Now you're just giving me the graphs. What is this graph? Bullshit, nonsense. You have not done the analysis. You have not done the data. This paper is meaningless. Remove this paper now. Thank you. It is off from the second pass. So you see, are the results shown? Are the conclusions statistically designed? That, okay, sir, I have stated that after this, after the throughput, I observed that my protocol is better than this protocol in 26%. Then I am interested in this paper that this person is actually giving me a depth based approach. So please, everybody craft the paper properly. So see this, everybody, so that second pass can take an hour. And after this pass, you can able to understand that what is exactly in the paper. So don't read the paper fully. Go one pass, second pass, and then the third pass. Now see this, everybody. Sometimes you won't understand the paper. So at the end of second pass, this may be because the subject matter is new, but the authors may have used some experimental technique. So you can say that some of the papers can become a bulk, but they become incomplete. So remove those papers. I'm saying openly on second pass. This is my answer to all of you. If after the results, they have not written the analysis, if they have not shown the data on the graph, remove that paper. This paper is a junk paper. I'm saying openly to all of you. If your analysis is not given, which means that paper is going to confuse you. Maybe the graphs are vague graphs, vague. So always mention the data values. So the paper, you can see over here, the paper may be poorly written and maybe it is having numerous forwarded references or maybe you are tired. But the other thing is the paper is nonsense paper. Now see this, you can set aside the papers that you can see that you can understand and read the paper again to find the background and then go to the third pass. Now, what is the third pass? Now you can understand how to read the paper. Now the third pass, you identify now in this, you only read what is being contributed by the paper. Like suppose I designed my routing protocol. Now you should understand what is actually the particular idea, how I framed that idea. And that's the reason you can see the third pass is basically that how you will understand that how the paper is implemented. Now, remember everybody, Remember, now note down three points. If you are writing a paper and you are writing your own proposed methodology, first of all, make system model. What is the modeling? What is the mathematics? Second thing, give the detailed working. Detailed working should be first point is known as the steps. Step one, step two, step three. Give your algorithm, give your flow chart. Okay, and then go for simulations. Because if I don't understand your working in terms of algorithm as well as your flowchart, I'm sorry, the paper is off from the third pass. So this part requires great attention and please present a particular idea. And let me tell you everybody, in order to understand the paper actually, 
understand what is being contributed and how the paper is being compared now see if you have proposed a new thing and the paper is not comparing or the paper is comparing only the outdated protocols like suppose i made a new protocol in 2020 and i'm comparing with the protocol which is 10 years back this is a nonsense paper so that's the reason everybody that even if you are comparing a paper please compare with some existing works rather than standard approaches so compare i'm going to show you some of the text but but i'm showing you that why the paper is to be read and how it is to be read and why your papers are not getting cited so the main thing is the timing should be properly correct and you should have at least 10 minutes in a proper review and after that go for some further weeks find some more information and then try to contact the authors that okay sir i selected your paper can you explain me these things believe me everybody even today my pa my phd papers are getting recognitions they're getting high reads on research gate and people are asking me questions that sir can you explain me this thing can you explain me this thing sir can you share this source code and even i shared my source code also so that's the answer everybody that why your paper is getting recognized so set your goals have a proper time to review study time should be 50 minutes that's the reason that that's why the question came that's uh, how can i manage my time so always read the paper in a 50 minutes so when you're reading the time at least devote two hours a daily so 50 minutes should be reading the paper and 10 minutes should be your thinking time i will be giving you the timetable tomorrow so reading is learning and secure your future and earnings now before i go for the uh, tools i'm going to take a break for five minutes and after that we start Dr. Arun, Dr. Arun, tell me, sir. Sir, we are taking a break for five minutes. If anybody has a question, please ask the question. After that, I will go for the practical session for tools of scientific publishing. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, I will share the PPT. No problems for that. This PPT can be shared. Yes, Dr. Arun, any question? Yes, sir. Or any participant has any questions, so please ask there. I'm online on the YouTube right now. You can share the feedback form later, sir. Thank you. OK, any questions by the participants? We start in two minutes. Thank you. Okay, so yeah, I will be checking this question. I will be showing some books right now so that you can understand. And uh, tools also now it will be done. Now I, will, uh, now I will be going more towards practical session and everything. Yeah, so let us go to this uh, question. Uh, some people ask me what is this uh, Google Scholar and everything. So let me tell you. Arun sir, can I share the screen please? Yes sir, yes sir. Yeah, thank you. Uh, okay thank you so some people ask me that sir what is actually google scholar now let me tell you google scholar is a good tool in order to search for the papers but google scholar is not a very good tool in order to search for the papers 
okay why it is not proper because we cannot rely on google scholar for 100% of the coverage of content because if you search any papers google scholar will give you a complete list of the papers but some of the papers can be from the predatory journals now let me tell you what is actually meant by a predatory journal predatory journal is one of the journal which first of all don't follow a proper review process the review process means that you first of all submit the paper the paper goes to editor in chief editor in chief checks the quality of the paper in terms of plagiarism in terms of contribution in terms of scope and then editor in chief assigns the paper to the reviewers reviewers take the time for one to one and a half months after that they submit the comments and after that you get the comments you resubmit the paper then you go for the acceptance or for re-revision or re-revision and then for final acceptance and secondly if the paper is not if the journal is not a predatory journal they will not charge for anything and thirdly why the journal becomes a predatory because they just give uh, you just give the paper today and in 10 days they give the paper for publication you didn't get any review comments whatever you submitted it is published you don't get a proper website and and second they and which is most important they claim that they are indexed in google scholar they are indexed in dblp or sometimes proquest or jgate but they claim for many logos but when the paper gets published even the paper doesn't come to google scholar also so these type of issues are there in terms of predatory journals so beware now let me tell you what is actually meant by google scholar so if you go to the profile first of all and i will be showing you some of the you can say glimpses that what is to be done now you can see right now here is the details of mine. So if you just uh, uh, click over here, this is called editing. So here you can see my name, my affiliation, even my research activities. So these are my activities where I actually publish the papers. So like my ad hoc sensor networks, network simulation, blockchain. So you can put five categories. After that, you require an official email. But if you don't have an official email, you can register on IEEE or ACM. You can make like anandnayar at the rate acm.org or IEEE.org if your institute is not providing you any official email. But Yahoo, Gmail, Hotmail, these emails don't work. And after that, this is my website. Okay, so I just click on save so you can just save it. Now, let me come to this thing. This is called citations. Citations means how many times the total times your papers are cited by other papers like you see the references so my papers are cited by 1433 times this means that my different papers are added to different journals different publications different conferences white papers 1433 times now what is h index now listen to me very carefully h index means that if suppose your one paper is indexed one time one paper one time h index becomes one if your two papers are indexed two times, H index becomes two. If your three papers are indexed three times, it becomes three. So you can see my 20, which means my 20 papers are indexed 20 times. So if my 21 papers become indexed 21 times, it becomes, and you can see cited by, you can see the score right now. Okay. So you can see over here, some paper are cited two times or three times. So if your papers are cited by one paper, one time, two paper, two times, three paper, three times, four paper, four times. So more the papers are citing and everything, the numbers get in a proper variation level that becomes your H index. But what is I index? Suppose if any one of your paper gets cited, one paper gets cited 10 times. I'm saying one paper is cited 10 times. It becomes one which means right now my 48 papers, individual 48 papers are cited at least 10 times. So I index means that once your one paper completes at least 10 over here, one 10, then second 10, then third 10, then becomes three. So I index like that. And this is your co-authors, okay? And you can just even search for some titles that you can search on ad articles and you can search for your name, like all these things. So if you if you can, if you want to search the names or anything you want to search or add articles manually or anything you can do like this. So if you want to uh, make a reference, you can just go to Scholar. Now let me tell you how to use Google Scholar. So you can just search the paper like uh, Cloud Computing Security. Okay. Now see this. Now if I want the papers only from the last three years, you can even go for custom range. So I just put the range 2018 to 2020. So I just click on search. So which means only those papers that are coming from 2018 to 20, 2020, that is there. But I am not sure of this list because why? Because this list can even contain predatory journals. Okay, so I can remove that is a, include the patents. So I don't want the patents. So again, I'm refining my search. Okay, so if you go for any time, don't go for any time, just refine your search with custom range. So if you want to cite a paper, just click on this uh, double dots. 
you just copy here okay and you can just copy and you can paste so most of the references they can be done by ap style so that's my answer okay uh, some 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 journals are indexed in scopus but the publishers are also listed in predatory list don't select those journals don't select okay now let me come to some of the websites that you can see but otherwise i i will open my presentation first of all then we can start this is my second last presentation for the day and after that i will have one more presentation so bear with me and after that we will have some hands on so now i'm going to share some of the tools of scientific publishing so the first thing i will just go, come to the publishing only so you can just see the presentation so in order to verify the originality everybody so the uh, the first tool that everybody say me that okay sir we have what plagiarism software that we can use the only answer for mine is turntin turntin is good but most of the journals if you are actually your institute is listening to you and your management is very good again i am saying if your management is good then you should buy ithenticate ithenticate is one of the best tools that is used by industry even i work with industry professionals even they uh, recheck my paper at ithenticate so ithenticate is a tool that even as a special issue editor even as a editor in chief of ij global we only use ithenticate to check but there is one free tool for plagiarism that is called plagscan i will be showing you so you can see the verification of results right now and this is turned in okay so if you are doing your personal research and you want to have turned in so you can buy the turned in and uh, turned in is not a free software it's a commercial software but i can give you one website that you can use uh, that you can that i can give you to dr arun afterwards and uh, you can contact that person he is uh, selling the turned in accounts very cheap so you can buy the turned in unlimited accounts but only buy the instructor login not the student login otherwise the paper can go to repository it will be a problem for you so uh, the other thing is journal select uh, suggester i am going to show you the demonstration after that that how to put the papers in that i will be showing you so the next service is that i will i will be showing you is author mapper so let me come towards practical only now let me start with some practical things everybody now listen to these things very carefully okay and uh, this will sir, be sir, sir. Sir. hello you shared some of the questions in your yeah, I, I, I will be taking the question, sir, because uh, because I would like to have some hands on sessions now so that the students can learn and uh, that the people can learn how to write the research paper in effective manner. OK, okay so let's start with the hands on demonstration. So first of all, let me go with the uh, sites first of all. So the first tool which I would like to share with all of you is the journal suggester. Now, as the name suggests, it's called journal suggester. It is from Springer. It can be from Taylor. It can be from Elsevier. So as I've already told you that selecting the right journal is very efficient. So suppose I give the title like as a review of blockchain technologies. And I can say in 20th century, blockchain is making a huge impact okay so suppose you can just type your manuscript title and even your manuscript text and just select your subject area so my subject area is computer science so you can see architecture biomedicine everybody is connected with this type of things okay so just put your computer science and the data is secured it will not go to any repository so beware okay so just copy your title and copy your abstract and you just click suggest journals so after that, you can see that what are the journals that are coming in the scope of this type of uh, paper. And you can see that what are the first stage of decision. So 48 days, 83 days, 128 days. What is the acceptance rate? So you can see that all those journals are coming where you can put your paper. So you can see over here, even uh, World Wide Web is a journal. See this. And even the impact factor is listed. So this is one of the tools that you can use in order to find and select the journal. So similarly, Elsevier is also having the journal suggester. I will be giving these all links to Dr. Arun today only after the lecture. Uh, Dr. Arun, give me an email, please, for the presentations as well as for anything. OK? OK, sir. Thanks, sir. Yeah. So you can see over here. So if I just click on my search, so again, you can see I have just given a review of nano biosensors and internet of nanotechnology. And I just click on just click on field of search, every everything. And you can even go for more things like site score, what will be the impact factor. So suppose I want my impact factor to increase by eight. I want the first edition to be less than 29. And even the time to publication should be less than, I can say, 25 weeks. Okay. So if I click on find journal, you can see 
that you can get the, those journals which are coming into your suitability. So you can see that I can publish in nano communication networks and journal of informatics. So with this type of things, you can reduce the time and you can find the accurate journals for all of you. Now the next thing, everybody, that is going to change your time today. Now we all say that Google Scholar and Google Search is the best tool for searching the journals. And I'm saying openly stop using Google and stop using Google Search as a primary tool for searching the papers. Okay, so I'm giving you one tool that is going to search the papers for you and that will make a literature review for you in just one day. I can say in, one, in the five minutes. After that, you just have to download the papers and it just becomes a literature review. So you can just search author mapper. Now remember carefully how I'm going to demonstrate this. So just go to authormapper.com. Now suppose you are doing your research on uh, uh, machine learning or suppose if you're doing research on uh, you can say medical informatics so suppose if i go, if i go for my search on medical informatics okay this is my subject area you can do any type of uh, clustering or any type of keyword search so you can just click on map it so this will you can see you can just find all the papers all the things all the research papers that are coming and even you can refine your research even with the keywords like breast cancer data mining so you can see in medical informatics what other keywords you can have like suppose i'm researching on deep learning so you can say that with medical informatics and deep learning it is going to refine more now suppose if you are more working on cnn now now if i click on cnn more so which means that the papers are getting more refined more refined and more refined so this is the tool everybody that will go for a best literature review for you so you don't have to go for any Google search, any, any searching keywords, etc. Just type what you're doing, select the sub keywords, and you can see I can even go for image classification. Again, I can go for MRI, cardiac MRI. So you can see that this journal is even making the papers better, better, and better. And all the papers are getting original journals, no predatory journals. So that's how you can improve your literature view. You can be in touch with the journals, with the latest papers as soon as possible. And even you can connect with the people also. You can see if you want to connect to this person, you can immediately find what are the other papers that this person is publishing. And even you can export the citation also. You can make your own Excel sheet. What are the papers? What is the due list? What are the other authors? So you can click on two authors. You can find the authors over here. So who is this person? So you can find more information about this person that who is this person. Like that. So you can connect with this. So this is one of the best tools that you can find. Now, let me come to another thing. This is very important when you're going for PhD thesis or other thing. So you should, should search for some thesis also. The thesis is called OATD.org. So this is the website that is very good website that you can search some thesis like this. So suppose if I'm doing my research on swarm intelligence, so you can just click on search. It will take some time because it's a huge database. It's a big data database with more than 51 lakh. And you can see that till from 2016 to 2020, 195 theses are being published. So you can download all the theses in the planet with this website, a great website for all of you. So another website for you that is called Open Thesis, openthesis.org. This is again a good website. So suppose if you are researching on the area for uh, deep learning, in healthcare. So suppose I'm just using these type of keywords. So I just click on next. So these are the, the so these are the tools, everybody, like author mapper, OATD, open thesis. So you can see that all the thesis and everything is coming in front of you. That's how we can make our resources better, better, and better. So use uh, proper resources, everybody. So now everybody, I would like to give you something very good. So please register your profile over here. So if you really want to have some strong connectivity, network connections, and even you want to search for good job profiles, you can even connect to those people who write regular SCA papers. So this is called scaprofiles.com. This is a very good website that you can just register like a research gate. No doubt we should have research gate, but this is another great website for you. Now, another website that I would like to uh, give to all of you, that's called typeset.io. I will share the links with all of you, no problems. So suppose, Suppose now you don't know latex, you don't want to retype your paper in terms of journal formatting. So you just have to just uh, register with just a sign in over here with a Google account. After that, just type, uh, just upload your paper and select the journal where it is accepted. And after that, this website will automatically create the latex for you. And even it can create the formatting in the word file as per that journal. Very good website to uh, just save your time in terms of formatting and doing bullshit works like that. So the next thing, everybody, 
now 90% people say that sir we uh, if we are using grammarly that is also good grammarly is a very good tool for english editing but there is one more tool that is called ginger if you are using ginger also this is ginger is also a very good grammar checking software even i have used this and sometimes ginger doesn't use it doesn't give for more plagiarism but uh, the english editing is not so very good i can say it is good but not so very good grammarly improves english but it increases the plagiarism but there is one software everybody that you can subscribe that is even better than grammarly with less plagiarism and even better than ginger for improving the english so i am giving you another tool that is called that is called sivener so till it opens the website i should not waste the time so another website that you can write it down yeah everybody so you can uh, some sites are running so you can say that it can combine all the tools so this is again available for free trial you can just uh, download and you can start writing this is again one of the best writing software that you can see as per grammarly also so this is one of the tool that most of the people don't use so please use this tool sivanara now the next tool that is called kika.com so if you really want to uh, uh, have some research based connections if you really want to like some people ask me sir where we can download the reference materials the pdf material the uh, the uh, the research papers this is another area that you can find the research papers very good area and even you can download the app also you can even download it on mobile phones you can do lots of things now the next thing everybody that is going to change you now now there are some of the problem that people say that sir whether this journal is okay or which type of sca journal that you can have some people go to this world scimago so you can go for scimago also but scimago is not reliable it is not updated properly and some people they struggle for this thing that is called clavirate analytics even this is also good but will not give you much details but now i will give you one website that can give you the full details for everything that's called letpub so if you go to letpub you can just click over here and you can see that if you really want to find some journal that what exactly is this journal and what is the impact factor what is the other things so you can just search the journal name and even it is keeping updated itself so you can find all the journals over here only sca journals everything whether it is free or paid you can find the uh, browse of the list okay you can find all the list over here everything you can find all the list yeah so you can just go go and go you can find the list now suppose what is the beauty of this journal now suppose i want to have more information of this journal called i triple e access now see this it has already come and i just click on search now see this it has told me that it is the issn number it is a journal name it is the impact factor now it is not updated right now but it will be updated in 2 3 weeks it's an engineering journal and it is indexed in scie so see this everybody i have just click on i triple e access now see this is the beauty over here now it has already given me the site score which means now with the 4.96 site score we can expect that this journal can even go for 5 or maybe 6 impact factor you can see it's a quartile 1 and even what is the rank among that and even you can see online sub submission of the website also what are the category what other things so if you really want to check any sci or sci journal so this is the answer now i would like to answer you one question some people ask me the question that sir what is the difference between sci and scie and what is ssci so this is a question everybody this is a question which i can type right now some people ask me this question what is the difference between sci scie and ssci so let me tell you first of all that this is not this is the just a category if you want to have the major category this is called isi publication so if you are publishing in sci or scie or ssci it is a isi publication every university will call that okay do you have scopus publication or isi so isi will have three categories sci scie and ssci now you can ask me that sir what is meant by essci now essci journals are those which are not which are above scopus which are means that their reputation is better than scopus but right now they are waiting to be indexed for isi okay which means these are the middle journals so scopus category with web of science that is a third category second category is known as uh, uh, esci category and the top category that is known as uh, isi category so what is the difference between sci scie and ssci now let me tell you what is called sci that's called science citation index okay now those journals which are only published which are only published online now this is a basic difference but otherwise there is no difference between them if you have a sci journal or sci journal it is the same thing or ssci journals that is a different that's a same story okay so sci journals are those which are only publishing the hard copies the the, the soft copies 
okay the online copies but when you go for SCA journal, it is called Science Citation Index Expanded. But see, when you when you got your paper accepted, you can see that the paper that the journal asks you that do you want to have hard copies? Do you have want to have the print copies, etc. So those journals which publish hard copies as well as online copies that are called SCIE. That's why they're called extended journals. So the third category is called SSCI. That's called Science Citation Index Expanded. Okay, uh, that that is basically for social sciences journals. So if you are interested for any SCI or SCI journal, it is one of the same thing. There is no difference. Now let me go to some other website. It is called uh, another website that is called for you, Data Elixir. So this is another website that is again available for all of you. And now after that, as some people ask me that, sir, if we have SCI hub for journals, that is okay for us, but it is okay. But there is one more website that can give you the complete chapters and even books also. That's called LibGen. So if you go to libgen.is, that is another website that you can see that is even better than SA Hub. So if you don't get anything on SA Hub, go to this website that is called libgen.is. So you can see over here, if you if you really want to get updated on data science, if you are working on machine learning, Python, anything, it is a open forum. You can ask the question and you can do that. So libgen, you can see another good website for downloading all types of your SCI or SCA journals. Okay. Now let me go to another website. Now, some people ask me that, sir, we have done our thesis, what to do over thesis. So I recommend you that you can publish your thesis over there. So this is another publisher that can publish your thesis free of cost. That's called Grin Publishers. So Grin is also a very reputed publisher. And with this, your thesis will be given a DOI number. Even it will be indexed in ACM Digital Library and will have the ISSN number. So even if you go and search my thesis, even my thesis was also published here. So you can just search my thesis name. This was IWMARP. So if I just press enter, sorry for some internet now. Okay. Yeah. So let me search now. So you can see my thesis now. So if you have, if you have done your bachelor thesis, master thesis, MPhil, MTech or a PhD, that's a great website for your thesis based publications. So that's a, you can see my thesis right now. So that's your, so that's my thesis, everybody. Now I would like to give you some websites for uh, ebooks. So the number one website, which I personally use and I get my all things get correctly. And this is the better resource for you for teaching for everything. That's called pdfdrive.net. Now, before it opens, now let me go for another website. That's called free plagiarism set. That's called plague scan. So if you are going for a free plagiarism checking, so let me tell you, it's not highly reliable, but it is not even highly low also okay so the plagiarism check no doubt it can be done with turn 10 also but this is again a good website that you can check but uh, the plagiarism ratio that we have already found is uh, between three to five percent so you can say that uh, if your plagiarism is coming like a uh, 17 percent here so it could be 22 percent uh, like uh, over there in that so again it's a uh, free of cost you can download and you can do your organizations based uh, checking like that so here is a website called PDF Drive. If you want to search a book, like suppose I want to search a book on brain computer interface. So I just press enter. And if there is any book you can find, you can see over there, a practical guide to brain computer interface, brain computer interfacing for assistive robotics. So don't worry, Springer, Elsevier, IJ Global, IET, all the books that are available for any publisher that is almost listed over here. And even you can give them the email that if they, you want an ebook. So within 10, 15 days, they will index the book over here. Okay. So what I recommend that you can please take the uh, uh, membership of ACM also, because after you get the uh, membership of ACM, you can get the membership of this thing also that's called Skillshare. So this is again a very good area that you can learn for online classes and everything and even for the ebooks also. But uh, one website that you can give over right now is called Class Central. So Class Central is another uh, search engine, only the search engine that is only available for uh, free courses online. So if you are looking for any course like brain computer interface, Python, machine learning, and sometimes Coursera gives you payments also. So this is the only website that you can share the course materials like all that free of course courses. Okay. Now I would like to share you one website through which you can download all the torrents and everything. So another website is called KKS. So if you just click over here, and you just uh, come to this website now. So click on kkstorrents.to. So you can find that uh, lots of torrents are available. Now let me show you how to search for those torrents. So click on browse and click on other. 
so you just have to go for this ebooks even also that but if you click on these tutorials now see over here you can find everything like you can see right now the most important course has come the node the complete node.js course you can find lots of machine learning you can see Udemy Deno. you can find python machine learning whatever you want to have you can see see matlab based courses matlab programming so if you even want to search for a software you can just click on this one that's called uh, apps so you can just click on pc software and under that you can find your matlab you can find anything even lab view is available free of cost so if you want to download anything just click on any software and you can just click on this magnet you just have to download this uh, tool called utorrent so this is the best uh, torrent uh, application that you can download okay so this you can download and do your works well and uh, Next website that I would like to give you that is also a very good area for resource that is called unpaywall.org. So this is again a good resource, everybody, that many people ask me that, sir, we want to get a good connections. We want to read the papers, how we can get the papers, resources. So this is another uh, tool uh, apart from author mapper that is called unpaywall and open database for more than 26 million articles, scholar articles free of cost. Okay, so you can uh, subscribe everything. So that's for today, everybody. And tomorrow I will be opening up uh, that is called your uh, papers that uh, first of all, we will study this one fundamentals for grant writing. First of all, we will study this and then we will study that's uh, this one, how to make your papers better. Then we will study some, uh, you can say some uh, main document, uh, this one, writing thesis and dissertation that we will be discussing. And after that, I will be discussing some uh, more documents with regard to literature view. And uh, I will discuss uh, this one, this one paper, how to write a research paper. And finally, I will go for my final presentation for all of you. That will be the biggest presentation for day two will be this one that is writing a effective research paper with along with my tips for acceptance how you can get your paper accepted easily how you have to write your abstract introduction literature that we will be discussing tomorrow so today my foundation was that what is actually meant by research what is research and methodology what are the development uh, what are the tools for scientific research how you should read the paper you should develop an effective proposal how you can connect and the, some of the other websites that uh, how to prepare uh, the cover letter teaching as well as research proposals. So that's all for today. Now the house is open for next 10 minutes for the questions. And after that, we will discuss tomorrow. That's all. Thank you so much for everybody. Now the house is open for 10 minutes. Yeah, the house is open for 10 minutes for the, uh, for the questions, sir. And then I will be closing the session for day one. And I hope everybody has enjoyed that. Dr. Arun, kindly share the questions, please, if there is anything. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I'm sharing. Sir, I mailed you the questions, sir. Uh, it is better that you can share right now, I can say. OK, sir. One minute. Uh, please copy, paste the questions in a Word file, and don't close the Word file, please. Thank you so much. Is your computer going slow? Yes, sir. Okay, no problem uh, since you open the question. So, yes, thank you so much for the information. Tomorrow you will be having more information. Okay. This is just 50%. Uh, I can say 40%. Okay. Okay. Thank you so much. Yeah, yeah, sure, sure. It is perfectly well, sir. So, the question is uh, actually, sir, everybody, I would like to request you that please take your questions to uh, only the area that I am focusing right now because you are putting the question like uh, machine learning tools. There are lots of tools. Anaconda is there. So, please uh, ask the questions with regard to research methodology. For machine learning tools, these things you can just email me. Thank you so much. Okay. Now, uh, I will not give the answers to those questions that are coming out of the scope. That's the reason that people get uh, over there. 
Okay, I'm doing a PhD part time. I don't have access to university library sources. My guide is also located far away. So how to start thesis writing? What are the background documentation to? I've already told you that uh, as you, you don't have the resources and don't depend on the guide. So use author mapper. You can use this one unpaywall. You can use Google Scholar. So all these type of tools are available for these type of resources. Okay. So uh, rest everybody, I will be telling you that how you can write your thesis, how you can write your paper tomorrow. Okay, that will be the main lecture tomorrow. So sir, kindly tell about doing PhD in Indian university and doing PhD in foreign universities, research duration. I've already answered this question. So the most important thing is that you have to have the proper research proposal. And you have already told you that how to write the research proposal and uh, even how to write a collaboration email. And the most important thing is if you really want to have the funding opportunities, you have to be associated with some lab where the lab people have the funding opportunity. Like uh, I have some funding opportunities available with me because I'm collaborated with some uh, USA based uh, universities also. And uh, and after that, I'm having some joint collaborations with some Korea and some uh, China, Taiwan also. So that's why I'm getting some funding opportunities as well as some pu publication opportunities also. So this is not day one uh, work. So you have to work more hard. So please suggest article writing tools. Article writing tools could be your ref and write. That is also good. But uh, I suggest that you can uh, uh, use Grammarly, Ginger, and even this Sevener. These are the tools that are available for writing. So I'm sorry, I'm skipping this NS2, I'm sorry. Please suggest some universities to pursue postdoc abroad. So uh, for your postdoc, first of all, it is very important that you should connect have a, with a strong professor with the same profile and you should have a proper strong networking with him and you can write some pu paper publications with him. This is very important. So regarding that postdoc, it, it depends, but I suggest that you can look for some universities in Australia. You can look some universities for uh, uh, Germany, then uh, UK, uh, depending on the research profile. Okay, so if, you're, if your PhD is from a good university uh, i don't say that from a good university but if your research work is good and you have a good at least uh, minimum 10 sca papers minimum 10 sca papers in regular issues then you have a strong chance that you can have a postdoc please doing research in data science is, yes it is uh, useful and innovative can you say some free tools for checking plagiarism i have told you that uh, checking the plagiarism free of cost that is uh, not very reliable plaque scan is there but i suggest that you can go for turn 10. so turn 10 you can buy it free uh, almost uh, at a very cheap price that is better for you sir what topic should is better for doing thesis in the future sir research areas best give some guidance ai data science blockchain what if i tell you you can combine three of them because why? Because a data science is requiring security with the power of blockchain. And if you combine data science and blockchain, you can make some AI based techniques for doing some analytics and predictive analysis. So how to get up to date information research done or put I have told you author mapper and even this one unpaywall. So please keep keep yourself updated and even you can go for Google Scholar, check those uh, uh, timeline searches like from 2019 or 2020. So you can keep yourself updated. So every day you can get the updates. So how to know current and future research that that depends. That's a very broad question. I'm sorry. Yeah, pattern for a review paper. I will be showing you tomorrow. That is not today. Thank you. Sir, one more question. What is Q1, Q2, Q3 journals? Thank yeah, please, sir, please, question. please type the please type the question. Please type the question. I don't understand. Sir, what is Q1, Q2, Q3 journals? Yeah, that's that's a good question, everybody. So Q1, Q2, and Q3 journals depend on the impact factor so let me tell you even there is one more category called q a q4 journal so q yeah, there is q1 q2 q3 and q4 so if your impact factor let me tell you it depends on the impact factor if your impact factor is less than 0 0.5 okay or 0 0.5 it is quarter four and don't publish in quarter four please they are the starting journals and even they can be out from sca journals in a in a future or maybe they can go ahead so if you are publishing in an impact factor which is less than 0 0.5 or 0 0.5 you are playing a huge risk so those papers are even not counted in my university only quarter one quarter two and quarter three are counted so if you're going for quarter three okay that is up to impact factor one which means like 0 0.8 up to 0 0.9 or 1.0 that is up to quarter three but if you're going for quarter two it would be like one it could be like one impact factor to 2.5 or you can say uh, up to about a 2.2 like all these impact factors but if you're going for impact factor general which is above 2.5 or three impact factor touching above like three impact factor four five six seven eight all those impact factors these are impact factors those are quarter one journals so that depends on the impact factor and some people ask me that sir how every year we can track that this journal is becoming high impact factor or other things so i always told, tell them everybody that please keep a close eye on this thing that is called the site fact that is called the site score let me tell you this is called the site score this is th this will give you a track that okay 
सर आर यू शेयरिंग माई स्क्रीन जस्ट आई एम शेयरिंग माई स्क्रीन सर प्लीज या थैंक यू सो आई एम आई ऑलरेडी टोल्ड यू द लेटपॉप यू कैन सी दॉटेल्स क्यू वन क्यू वन ओवर देयर सो दिस इज अट स्कोर सो इफ योर साइड स्कोर इज इंक्रीजिंग ओके विच मीन दैट इट इज अब फाइव और इट इज अब सिक्स okay which means that the impact factor will increase by above one or two points so which means that the side score is like 4.96 and impact factor is like uh, right now the impact factor is 4.098 which means that it can touch up to 5.5 like that so depending on the side score okay the impact factor is decided and this one is a quartile q1 q2 and q3 so i hope this answers the question to everybody so somebody are asking regarding the diagram tools and figure generator Yeah, figure generated. Okay, let let me tell you. Uh, I, I use I, I basically I, I basically uh, what I what I use uh, that is uh, if you if you can use Microsoft Office. So I use MS Visio. So this is one of the tool. Everybody, this is Visio. You can buy you can download it uh, uh, online or even you can buy a pirated version everywhere. Okay, so this is the tool. Everybody, MS Visio. But I use this tool. Uh, otherwise, you can even use Photoshop, Corel Draw. But I use this tool that is actually paid infographic. so if you go for this infographic so i have just paid one uh, pricing that is about 55 dollars uh, for lifetime okay so infographic is a very good uh, website for making visual presentation graphs etc so i use this website so the word selection package over there so if you go for this one let me show you yeah so you can see how much uh, better you can make your graphs etc for all these type of things so infographic is the website for uh, making the uh, uh, diagrams that's what i recommend Yes, this video will be available. Everybody, this video is actually recorded. Okay. Any other question, please, so that we can complete the today's lecture. Any questions? Arun sir, any other question, Any please? Questions. No sir. I think we can wind up the session, sir. Sure. Uh, yeah, this, this is a question over there. Is UGC NET or GATE exam is compulsory for uh, going for PhD? No, it is not uh, fully compulsory. But if you having a GATE, if you have a UGC NET exam, you can just get a uh, exemption in the entrance test. But it is better that you can go for the university based entrance test for PhD exam. Yeah, I have told you. that if you uh, if you just download ms office over there from uh, this uh, from kickass you can uh, download the ms visio also but you can even use photoshop and corel draw okay but i only trust this website that is called infographic i have this uh, subscription so you can take the subscription like that so even there are free templates also okay so you can find that and if you go for full access yeah so let me give you so you can have even the presentations also so uh, you can have you can see over here you can just have to buy for uh, $50 for lifetime $50 means that as per indian currency only 3500 rupees so i think so if you 3500 rupees is there it's a perfect tool for getting this yes a mathematical equation editor or sometimes we use mathematica for this type of things uh, grammarly check is helpful but you again uh, it increases the plagiarism that is the problem any other question everybody just i will take one more minute thank you okay so uh, here is my uh, email id everybody if you have any question so you can uh, you are most welcome to ask your question so here is my whatsapp number just whatsapp everybody again i am repeating just whatsapp so this is for my whatsapp number so if you are uh, uh, if you are interested to give me a whatsapp call or you want to uh, ask any question you can have the whatsapp call also so esca is good or not yes esca is good but uh, right now i recommend that if you are going for good exposure please publish in isi publications because i have already cleared the myth between isi esca and scopus tomorrow session will be a high end session for all of you i am guaranteeing you that because tomorrow i will be giving you uh, the good tips and tricks how to write the paper and how to write the thesis and i will be showing you the books also tomorrow so thank you dr arun thank you so much no thank you sir
Thank yeah, you. which is uh, just just wait, sir. Uh, just one more thing is there, which is suitable for writing paper latex or word. Actually, if you are good in latex, then you can write in latex. But uh, if you are writing in latex, just uh, use overleaf. And uh, if you are uh, uh, then latex is there, then mintex is there. But we prefer because uh, I am not very expert in latex, so I use MS Word only. Yes, for uh, Mendeley is not uh, Mendeley is now good, but uh, Mendeley will confuse other things. But uh, I suggest you can go for Author Mapper. Author Mapper will give you better things. I have already shared my WhatsApp number. Please check the chat. Thank you so much. I will not repeat the things. Okay, Arun sir, thank you so much. Thank you. Good thank evening. You, uh, thank you all the participants for your and the patient listening. Even though the session has been uh, winded by seven o'clock because of uh, more and the interesting and the tips to be given by a resource person, the session continued till up to eight o'clock. So I am once again acknowledged for it. Uh, thank you for your wonderful and patient listening. Thank you. We can only meet you tomorrow exactly at same time at five p.m. Thank you, sir. Tomorrow session can take the three three hours. Okay, sir. Okay, sir. Tomorrow the session will be up to three hours from five to eight. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Sir. Eight o'clock only. We will okay. be sharing the feedback. Thank you. Thank you. Sure, sir. Thank you. Sir. Thank you. Okay, sir. You can you can stop the streaming, please. Thank you so much. Yes, sir.